Saludos, conocedores de la imaginación. Yo soy Robert Meyer Burnett, conectando con ustedes, los miembros de la singularidad Post Geek, y especialmente con nuestros amigos del mundo hispanoparlante. Muy pronto debutará Latin X-Men, nuestro primer programa en español, con Alex Montano y Roberto Suárez. Y quién sabe, tal vez yo los visite de vez en cuando. Sintonízate pronto con Latin X-Men, aquí en la singularidad Post Geek. Greetings, Imagination Connoisseurs. Once again, it is I, your Duke of Dope Discourse, Robert Meyer Burnett. I invite you to watch and listen to the Designing Hollywood Podcast, brought to you by Martika Abera and the great, legendary Hollywood costume designer, Marilyn Vance. I am afforded the wonderful opportunity of co-hosting the show. If you are interested in the magic of Hollywood, the design of Hollywood, the clothes of Hollywood, watch The Designing Hollywood Podcast, available wherever you get your podcasts from, or find the video version on YouTube. That's right, The Designing Hollywood Podcast. Why would you ever want to miss it, especially if you love the movies? <laughs> Well, greetings, Imagination Connoisseurs. Once again, it is I, your Duke of Dope Discourse, your master of fun and wonder, your viceroy of verisimilitude, yada, 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 feral physical media, Robert Meyer Burnett, and I am here with Let's Get Physical Media. And once again, I can't sing that song on cue. I am no Olivia Newton-John. Uh, this is Let's Get Physical Media, episode 85. But you know what? You know what I'm going to say. It's not a show. It's not a show without... My favorite German, your favorite German, the world's most favorite German, more popular in Germany than Angela Merkel. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, all the way from Saarbrücken, Deutschland, Mr. Dieter Bastian. Dieter, how are you? Well, Rob, my car is finally repaired after three months so that I can drive to work again, you know, and I say, greetings, imagination, going to see us, Dieter, here, here I am, rocky like a hurricane, and welcome. To the B&B Motel for Let's Get Physical Media, where we talk all stuff. And of course, physical media will be at the heart of the show. And Rob has a nice topic for the show because someone reached out to us. Uh, you, you know, okay, so here's the thing, Dietz. We've been doing this show for a long time. One of the things that we don't get, like other shows get, you know, maybe they have a bigger audience, But let's face it, we're way more entertaining. We're the most entertaining. I know spare change. We are change. more international, Rob. We are spare domestic change and international. Th yes, yeah, spare change and Theo. I love Theo. You know, uh, f movies at home. There's Love that guy. Uh, there's great channels, but we don't get free shit. No. We don't get screeners. To be fair, I've never asked. However, we got reached out to. This show got reached out Unbelievable. to. Unbelievable. Unbelievable by guess who? We are, if, I'll let you all guess. Kino Lorber. Now, as you know, Kino Lorber has aggressively been punching into the 4K market. And, uh, you know, I have to say, I think their first 4K disc might have been Hannibal. Uh, incredible transfer. And now that I'm, now that I, I put it up on the wall finally, I got, I'm rocking the OLED, uh, 65 inch OLED screen in the media room. I've been t been looking through uh, their their output, like the Man with No Name trilogy. Their usuals, I gotta say, the Usual Suspects. Oh, I should have brought that show, but everyone knew them. the Usual Suspects came out along with Dress to Kill from Kino this week. Brian De Palma's Dress to Kill. The Usual Suspects is in fact in Dolby Vision HDR Dolby Vision. It looks incredible. It looks the movie has never looked as good as it looks on 4K. Highly recommended. Awesome. Awesome. And of course, not since 2002 has the special features that Dave Parker and I and Carrie David made been available on 
any HD disc. I mean, the special features were done in standard def because we produced them in 2001, but they have not been seen on any disc since the DVD, the, the two disc special edition release. Uh, actually, it wasn't a two disc. It was a flipper. You had to flip it over. I have to no see idea the... anymore. Rob. I probably own it, but I have no idea. If, uh, yeah, well, that flipper. and they were they were those special features at the time where a lot of people liked them. Kino Lorber has put all of those special features back on the disc, including um, a new a new fifteen minute documentary interview with Tom Siegel, the director of photography. Tom Siegel approved this transfer. It's a sixteen bit transfer. Awesome. It's absolutely beautiful. So anyway, got a letter from the folks at Kino. Uh, wrote a letter. And um, I I wrote back. I wrote back to Kino Lorber, and and here's what I said. So Kino Lorber has asked if we were interested in getting screeners of their 4K releases. And now that I can actually review and look at their 4K releases and make, I mean, I'm not going to do a small change style review. I'm going to do more from a viewing perspective. Yeah. Um, but I'm in the know, and uh, I do have an Atmos system, so I can I can give it a fair shake. And I can't wait. So I want to thank the folks at Kino Lorber. Uh, now, I also asked, uh, they reached out if we could interview some of the people at Kino Lorber about their transfers, about uh, maybe have somebody from Kino Lorber here on the show and ask about what, what do they decide <coughs> uh, to do in terms of their release schedule. Are they only taking films that are uh, that the studio's already prepped for 4K? Are they overseeing their 4K releases? I, I don't know the answers to these questions. Um, but So they're going to be sending the channel 4K review, uh, 4K discs to review. And I want you all to know that in my response letter, I wrote this to Kino Lorber. I said, here's, I, I, uh, I wrote that I, I'd love to talk about the creation of past titles, special features such as the amazing Richard Rush audio commentary on your Color of Night disc. We're very excited about Kino Lorber's remaining 2022 and 2023 output. And then I wrote this, Dieter, and all of you who watch this channel, especially this one goes out to you, Tom Jr. Jackson. I wrote finally in my letter. I have <laughs> one very, this is exactly how I wrote it. I'm reading right from the letter I sent back to Kino Lorber. Finally, I have one very, very, very important question. Where is the 4K disc of To Live and Die in L.A.? You lovely folks promised us this a year ago. It's one of my favorite 80s movies. Best regards, Robert Burnett. And I got a letter back. I got a letter back. Hi, Robert. Great. Glad to hear you're interested in checking out our 4K titles. I'll send all of our recent discs out to you tomorrow. We're still waiting on the latest ones to become available, but as soon as they're in stock, I'll send them to you. I'll also check with our producers to see if anyone might be available for an interview, but I'm afraid I don't have any updates on To Live and Die in L.A., mm. but I'll be sure to keep you posted if I hear anything. So I want to say, I won't use his name because I don't want a bunch of people writing to him, but uh, I want to say... Sir, you, my new favorite person at Kino Lorber, I want to thank you for reaching out because they reached out to us. And yep. uh, because we've been singing the Kino Lorber, we're, we're on the Kino train. It's better than being on the stinky <laughs> tuna, the tuna train uh, because their transfers are absolutely beautiful and they now are in Dolby Vision. And Tom Siegel supervised the usual suspects transfer and Dressed to Kill looks great too. So. Hats off to Kino Lorber. We're going to talk about another film they uh, announced for 4K this week. So Kino Lorber, I'm looking at Hats you. Hats off to you. Hats off to you. If I had a hat on, I would headphones off to you. But 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 don't think I'm not going to ride your ass about to live and die in L.A. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> <clears throat> here's the thing. Um, I have heard that it's because uh, William Friedkin hasn't either approved the transfer, he hasn't looked at the oh, transfer. Okay. But that ties into something we'll talk about later. So, right. Kino Lorber, thumbs up. Everybody should buy that Usual Suspects disc. And while you're at it, get Dressed to Kill. I know, now Dressed to Kill is a problematic movie. You know, <laughs> now it's problematic because, you know, a person who's cross-dressing is killing people. I get it. Cancel that movie because, you know, the world would be Thank a better you. place if you cancel it. But buy the 4K first. 
so you own it before somebody <laughs> decides to nice. cancel that shit because it's awesome. So thanks, Kino Lorber. You guys rule. Nice. I look forward to talking about your discs. Now I bet I I bet I know what you're going to ask me next. I have no idea, Rob. Yes, you do. Help me out. What do you want to know? What do you always want to know? Uh, the box office, Rob. The box oh, office, exactly. The box oh, office. Oh, I've got it right here. And especially, Rob, I know <laughs> we have the great titles, but I really want to hear how Terrifier 2 is doing. Oh, well, I think uh, Terrifier 2 is doing quite well. Uh, but here, let me read you yeah. uh, Nancy Tartaglioni in Deadline this morning at 1021 a.m., a little over an hour ago, posted this. Black Adam muscles up to $250 million global through its second mm-hmm. weekend. Smile, Smile is nearing $200 million worldwide on a $17 million spend. I mean, that that's some diabolic stuff. When Diabolic yeah. and Eva in the movie Danger, Mario Bava's movie, when they've, they've pulled off a heist and they're just writhing around in all their money, the people that made Smile are doing the same thing. They've spread out all the money on their bed, and uh, they're writhing around it. So congratulations. Um, Warner Brothers New Line's DC's Black Adam in its second offshore frame saw Stronghold down just 45%. It added $39 million from 76 offshore markets to take the running box office total to $139 million for global to a cum of uh, $250 million, including domestic. While superhero movies are clearly typically front-loaded, there were a number of Black Adam markets that saw only slight drops. School holidays helped in parts of Europe. Among the standouts are France, the Netherlands, Germany, and the UK. It was uh, Black Adam was number one in 60 overseas markets. So now the real question is, like $250 million is good, but as we've talked about before, I think, before they're going to greenlight any sequel, they want to see it get up to 400 million somewhere between four and 500 million i don't know if it's going to make it there it's halfway there maybe it will um it will get a china release rob in two weeks let's see oh that will do in china yeah i think it'll probably do well so good that's good but then the chinese they they stiff you on the box office so those guys (laughs) you know as they monitor us all via tiktok they screw us on the box office but anyway that's okay paramount's smile Added seven million. Uh, it has made a hundred and eighty-six million, which is an unbelievable. Good for Smile. Good for horror. Good for everybody. Good for Paramount. You guys go. That was a movie that wasn't was it, go... it. It landed as a, as a Paramount Plus movie. First, yes, firstly. yes. And this is this has been happening with horror titles. Um, both Barbarian, four point five million to make, produced by the great Roy Lee, four point five million. Uh, it's made over 40 million worldwide, which is it's now on HBO Max. But that's a tremendous, that's a that's a huge hit, huge hit. Um, in any other time, people would be like, "Oh my god, amazing!" But I mean, th- that would be if you look at how much it, even with the the marketing. By the way, Barbarian was beautifully marketed, great, great, great marketing by <clears throat> all involved over at Disney. Believe it or not, Barbarian is a Disney movie, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, uh, Lyle Lyle Crocodile has now made fifty million global. Woo hoo! Um, Halloween Ends is up to ninety four million global. Ticket to Paradise, the George Clooney, Julia Roberts movie, is at one hundred nineteen point four million. Mrs. Nice. Harris goes to Paris. It's an indie film, eighteen million. The Woman King, eighty seven million. Uh, Amsterdam is only at twenty four million. Too bad for Amsterdam. Bros, hanging on thirteen million. Um, Minions: The Rise of Gru is at nine hundred and thirty-four million, Ooh. almost a billion dollars. Top Gun: Maverick is at one. Now, this is a movie that's on digital. As we know, it comes out on four K next week mm-hmm. on disc. Top Gun: Maverick is at one point four eight six billion. If with it, if fourteen million dollars, it passes the one point five billion dollar mark i mean that's crazy but great i mean it's great for everybody that worked on 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 them now at the domestic box office uh the the new film 
Pray for the Devil, which opened in 2,900 yep. theaters, only made 2.5 million on Friday, or 2.8 on Friday, and it's going to wind up with 7.2 million, which is, I heard it was terrible, uh, I, which is too bad because I was really, I, as you know, I will watch anything with Satan, satanic cults, uh, possession, demons, but when they suck, they suck. Um, and uh, let's see, uh, Todd Field's Tar is uh, it's small. It's only made just over a million bucks, but uh, and Halloween Ends made is up to sixty million domestic. But the big story, the big story, Terrifier Two, exactly. Terrifier Two, uh, a movie that was crowdfunded that again was going to get a perfunctory theatrical release has made $7.7 million at the box office. Steve Barton and all the folks that made Terrifier 2, good on you. It just goes to show you what you can do when you creatively kill a bunch of people on screen. Now, Dieter, you showed, <laughs> you showed, you got Terrifier 2 on physical media. Exactly, Rob. Exactly. Why don't you show us that bad boy? Exactly. Where is it? Where is it? Here, Rob. Yeah, and I was really happy to get it, Rob, because in the UK... Considering Amazon, both Blu-rays are already at the moment sold out. You know, yeah, this is sold out, and they released. Since I am not, don't have that order that you have because I don't know where my American disc of Terrifier One is. I bought a double from the UK too, so I can have both movies. So it's just so you got a, you got a real clown house over there, don't you? There, Deets. Yeah. Real clown house exactly. over in Saarbrücken. So they put out the the double with both and the single, and both are sold out at the moment, Rob, at Amazon UK. And strangely enough, Rob, before the show, I checked it. It says B here, Rob, but it's playable with a code A player 2. Just saying. Wow. Just, just saying. And Rob, goddamn, this movie will not get through. The German MPAA, or like we say here, the FS, the FSK uncut, it will not make it. I'm pretty sure about it that it will, like the first one, will not pass the but normal. That, certification. that doesn't matter because your countrymen, you've bypassed your countrymen, you've bypassed the censors, you own it now. Exactly. Now, From what the, what did okay? you think? What's what's the Dietz review of Terrifier two? Uh, Rob. For me, it lived up to the hype, you know. It already had the hype from the first one, you know. Uh, and uh, it totally <laughs> delivered, Rob, you know. Because Art the Clown is someone that doesn't stop, you know. It's not you get your throat slashed and he leaves it at that. Well, he just, he, he's just starting, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> and let's be honest, it is the, the gore that sells the movie. But... Uh, a lot of people were uh, really uh, fond of the performances from uh, uh, David as Art the Clown and from uh, Lauren Lavera La as, the, as the final girl. She was great in it. Uh, the only, the only the two actors was the, I would say, the son and the mother. They were a little bit not the, the best, but considering the budget, really nicely done, <clears throat> practical effects, Rob. And the movie goes bonkers, Rob, at the end. So there is a lot of questions. And I hope that director Damien uh, uh, Leone will probably not try to answer them all. You know, we all know how it will go. If you try to answer stuff, then it will get could get even more wonky. And I think, Rob, Terrifier 2 should get the crown. I think it should be. It will be. It must be the longest slasher there is out there, considering 138 Yeah, it's almost two minutes. and a half hours long, right? Yeah. And Rob, this, this movie didn't feel as long as Halloween ends. Just saying that, even if it's 20 minutes longer, okay? I just love the fact that Look. the director's name is Damien. Exactly. It's all exactly. for you, Damien. All and, that money. From, all yeah. the money. And, it, that... and it's, it's just a great success story because I didn't really expect it that the movie to get a theatrical release at all you know like the like the, like the first <clears throat> well one. well i mean this isn't the reason but but um i have to say that what uh what the box office has proven when it comes to horror these days is uh there is money to be made 
And yep. Smile was not going to be originally a theatrical release. Barbarian was not going to be a theatrical release. But because of how audiences responded at test screenings, which, by the way, is exactly what's supposed to happen. When you test a movie, normally people look to see what's wrong with the movie. You only hear about, well, because of test screenings, we went back and recut the film. It is great to hear that films and filmmakers, especially in the lower budget horror arena, are being rewarded with uh, great screenings. And when the screenings go off well, they um, they get theatrical releases. The same thing has happened to the new Evil Dead movie. Evil Dead Rise is going to get a theatrical release when it wasn't going to before. And uh, Blue Beetle, I don't think it had a test screening, but Warner Brothers Blue Beetle is okay. going theatrical when it was going to be direct to screaming. Screaming. It's going direct to screaming, Deets. <laughs> That's what we should call it. We, we, you know what? <laughs> this horror film is going direct to screaming. <laughs> which screaming with with box office dollars is it going to go is it going to go direct to screaming theatrically let's hope so that's by the way we've coined that phrase we're 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 trademarking that direct to screaming is i'm sure somebody some cheeky bastard at variety already did that but i have not encountered that term before let's own it let's own it here let's get physical Close media is screaming. the horror film going to go direct to screaming so um and, yes uh Considering the movie, it just shows you how strong, what can what word of mouth can do for a movie. And Rob, I like when a movie sets the tone immediately at the beginning. So if you get brain matter after five minutes, you know what you're in for. You still can walk out, you know. So By after the five way, minutes, you know what you're what you're in for. At Harkins Theater, this my is local not for Chris Carr. Rob. <laughs> <laughs> no, my local theater, the Harkins Theater here, which is a great theater here where I live. We really it uh, we got a, we've only got like two theaters in the area. Harkins is great. They are playing Terrifier two and awesome. Barbarian. Barbarian, even though it's on HBO Max, is still in the theaters. So yeah, uh, yeah. And I've seen I've seen Barbarian on uh, Tuesday, Rob, on HBO Max. Totally loved it. You are not lying. What a great trip. Uh, and we all will hope that at some point we will get a physical release of the of the movie. But well, it was a great trip. At, um, as, producer as, Roy as, Lee. As you can, can go, in, go in cold considering, considering Barbarian. Producer Roy Lee did say that both he and the director did record a commentary. But that doesn't necessarily mean a physical release because on digital, you know, they yep. put out... But, I mean, Barbarian is a movie. First of all, I really love the way it was made. I mean, very simple. You know, they made it in Bulgaria the same way we made Hills Run Red in uh, Bulgaria. And, you know, I, I would love... Barbarian is a movie that I want to own. And I'm hoping... I would love to see Second Sight get it. You know, and get a full-blown Second Sight release. Because, as you know, between... I mean, I, I, I have a shelf. I have a shelf right up here. You can't see it. But uh, I've got drive the box set of drive right next to the box set of dawn of the dead thank you second sight please please go get barbarian because the movies they get are great i want to buy all their stuff but they're kind of weird like i uh, apparently they're still doing you know george george feltenstein we talked about he was not really aware of um second sight and they george found apparently was able to find the negative of the hitcher for them if memory serves and so they're going to put out the hitcher, and they're supposed to be doing Near Dark, I think. And, of course, we're still waiting on so their too. disc of Martin, George Romero's Martin. So maybe they'll do Barbarian, because I would love to see that. Please, please, Second Sight, may I have some more? Um, and once again, this is Region A, B playable, even if it says on the back on the cover, Region B. Just, the, just You know what? More. They don't even care anymore. <laughs> <laughs> they just don't care. It's like, meh. <laughs> Whatever, you know, Whatever. we're just happy someone's <laughs> buying it on physical media. Um, although I do, I I will say this, in my, in our new media room, well, actually the movie room, I call it the movie room. It's not the media room; it's a movie room. Although it's video games too. Um, I do have two 4K players. One is specifically dedicated to Region B, so my Region B Blu-rays don't have to switch. You know, I've got the more the the, the cheap ass Sony player that actually works. I I was worried it would get jostled in the move but it works um so that's good so now i've got you know i've got four 
four Blu-ray 4K players in the same room. <laughs> between the between the, the Xbox and the PlayStation Five and the two dedicated players. So that's good. By the way, our friend Mike, Mexican Iron Man, yeah. says, ha, 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 ha. This message is approved by Mexican Iron Man. What my, what Mike is talking about is the promo for Latin X Men. I want to give a shout out on the channel to Alex Montano and Roberto Suarez, our own Roberto Suarez. They've been talking to me for about a year to do a Spanish language show. And at first it was going to be called Latinx Force. And it's caused some, caused some controversy Ooh. because the, the term Latinx or Latinx is this, I mean, it's, it's a progressive, woke, supposed to, people of Latin descent are not fans of it. This is like, this is like. <laughs> although Roberto did explain to me the term a Latinx or Latinx was created by Puerto Rican scholars uh, who wanted to come up with a term that they could use. And I can't, I mean, as far as I know, Roberto is like Chekhov on Star Trek when everything great just came from Puerto Rico. So who am I to say no? Everything great probably does come from Puerto Rico. But that's where the term came from, and, and they thought it was a cheeky play on words. I have been getting messages from people, and I lost subscribers on this channel. People are like, <laughs> Rob, you can't call something Latinx. I'm like, oh, you mean a Mexican dude and a Puerto Rican dude, and the Mexican dude with his hot wife is living in Colombia. They come up with the title Latinx men or Latinx force, and I'm supposed to tell them what they can title their show? I love it. Uh, I just want people to know that that was their idea. It was not my idea. I stand behind them. They've talked about the fact that they've gotten some pushback, and I'm like, fuck that. Call it Latinx, man. It's dope. Anyway, who knows? We might have to change the name, but that's up to them. It's their show. Anyway, watch it. It's pretty funny. It's 97% in Spanish. Until I come on, they make me look like a fool, which I'm perfectly willing to do <laughs> for to get them views. So if you speak Spanish... Or if you know somebody that does, please send them the link to Latinx, man. I thought they did a great job. Nice. Considering, Rob, just a second back to Terrifier, I made a comparison on Instagram. And I would say that, just just you, I use this, Terrifier 1 is to rate and Terrifier 2 is to rate 2. Rob. Oh, really? Wow, okay. Exactly. <laughs> just in scope, you know. I'm going to tell more, you, I'm going to tell you a secret. I've never seen Terrifier one. Uh, I mean, you don't I you don't have to Rob. The but, first five uh, minutes of Terrifier two, I got the gist. Okay, Rob, you okay. got the gist. Okay, Terrifier one was just a little movie, Rob. Uh, it's already four or five years old. You know, it came I know. out, uh, I believe, two thousand seventeen or two thousand eighteen. I, I wasn't even expecting that the movie will would get a sequel. Now let, some, let me point. ask you. Let me ask you a question. The movie, the one criticism I have, oh, I have many, but the one, the, it's, it's Terrifier 2. I almost wish they shot it on film. Yeah, but I like the look, Rob. It's not, it doesn't look uh, uh, video-like, you know? I, no, I like the look but the it movie. is really clean. I felt like it should be a little bit grungier. <laughs> the film itself, it's very clean. You know, it's, it's brightly colored. So it, it colored. looks better than you expected, Rob. Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, I would have shot that shit on 16 millimeter. Yeah, you know, I would I would have gone for that that like the movie Basket Case. I would have gone for a little Basket Case <laughs> grungy '70s New York, but it's fine. It's fine. It, it, it you wouldn't have been able to see the blood as well you, as you can in uh, the movie, and yeah. there is a lot of it. Exactly, and the, and the, the gore actually actually sells the movie, Rob. I know it does. <laughs> it does. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> um, <laughs> Mala says Dieter. Yeah. Your yeah. taste, uh, super chat from Mala. Mala says, Dieter, okay. your taste in cars and movies are the same. Okay. So I like Japanese ones. I have no idea how it, how to compare it, Mala. But okay. How can you be uh, a German and, think... and like Japanese cars? By the way, I love Japanese cars. I'm I'm a big Toyota fan. Well, well I'm driving <clears throat> a driving one, Rob. <laughs> I know, but you're a German. You know, shouldn't you have? Yeah, shouldn't, but... shouldn't you drive a BMW or something? Yeah, Rob, but you know, they're a little bit. Don't more they, I deeper, thought deeper. I thought the German government just gives BMWs to German citizens and then say subsidize. That would them. be that would be a nice thing, Rob. But then I would wouldn't earn any money, Rob, because we make the transmissions for the BMWs, you know. But you you even you even make transmissions for Beamers, and you can't get that that sweet hybrid, that Beamer hybrid. Uh, 
probably Rob BMW would probably be way too big <laughs> to fit in my garage. <laughs> maybe, maybe. I mean, if Kino Lorber is going to send us 4K discs yeah, to review, exactly, Rob. perhaps <laughs> BMW. Come on, Beamers. I mean, we got a guy that yeah. works on your transmissions. Hook him up. He can't. He exactly. can't. He can't get the 4K discs from Kino Lorber. They're not going to ship international. So give him a little something. Yeah. Speaking of horror, Rob, I don't know. Uh, you probably didn't get around to watch it because it was uh, a release on. Friday on Netflix, uh, the remake of All Quiet. Oh, dude. <clears throat> you you watched it, Rob. Okay, you watch uh, it. okay, here's the thing. I only dipped into it because it's long. Okay. I couldn't. Yeah, two and, and a half hours. It's fucking fantastic. Yeah, it is, Rob. It is. It is. You know. Uh, I was really, really surprised considering the production value of the of the movie. And uh, it really deserves the approval of an anti-war film, really. Well, I'll tell you, you know, your 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 uh your uh countrymen back in 1930, uh those uh that group of people that were coming to power, the original the original um All Quiet on the Western yeah. Front, they yeah. banned the movie from Germany and they banned the book it was based on, which is sort of interesting because this is a German film. Yeah. You know, with German real German actors and They've actually, I was listening to a fascinating story. There's a couple of characters that weren't in the original movie, real German statesmen that were, are in this film, in this version. And um, it's, a, I, you know, I was blown away because it's, it's Netflix yeah. only here. It's Germany's um, official, in, um, um, uh, it's their film they've submitted for the Academy Awards. Exactly. Yeah. I think it's a front runner. And um, again, I haven't even seen the whole movie. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. It was and totally... I, Totally blown away. So this is horror on a on a different on a different scale than uh, Terrifier. Terrifier I've read had, that. Had, had some good laughs. Yeah, not so Rob. Not so. Did you not get so to much. delve into Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities? Unfortunately not, Rob. Unfortunately not. But I uh, heard good things about it. There's some good stuff there. I haven't watched them all, okay. but um, definitely check it out. It's handsome production. A lot of good stuff there. Awesome. So where where does that leave us? <laughs> Uh, with other stuff, Rob, on streaming a little bit. I don't know if you gotten around to on Paramount Plus. I watched Significant Other with Micah Monroe, you know, the actress from The Watcher, from oh. Watcher. Uh, really nice movie, Rob. If you don't know anything, go in blind, Rob. Go in blind. Significant Other on Paramount Plus. Recommendation from you. This is uh, this didn't get a theatrical release. Significant Other. It was. It is out, I think, about two or three weeks now. Don't or was it end end of December? But really nice one, significant other. Wait, I don't mean to interrupt you, but Jimon yeah. D. Jimon D. sent yeah. us a tip. Thank you, Jimon. I appreciate this channel support. Jimon says this is interesting. Jimon says I came across Damien Leone on Chris Gore's channel, the director of Terrifier Two. Oh yeah, he did an I, interview with. Him. I came across Damien Leone on Chris Gore's channel, and he stated that his dream would be to make Friday the Thirteenth. So here's hoping. And also glad through channels like Film Threat, we are getting introduced to interesting indie filmmakers with a unique voice. Uh, I agree. We're going to have some indie filmmakers on this channel uh, soon that have also made a horror film that's making the rounds. But uh, I'm going to keep that until it's solidified. I can't say. But, Jimon, thanks for the support. That's interesting. I, I did not see that interview. I, I need to go watch it. Um, I wanted to, to wait after I've seen the movie to delve into the... Uh, interview from Chris Gore with with the director. Yeah, I mean that's uh, that's uh, that's very 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 cool. Um, anyway, back to you, Deets. Back to yeah. you. Other stuff that I watched: Archer, season thirteen, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Show is still still going strong, even if it's not uh, only eight episode. And I thought the animation still was still going uh, strong. Even even a, a step up, uh, considering the animation. Truly had a good time with Archer. Especially, of course, with the with the scientist Dr. Krieger, you know. Some sometimes I stumble across series that I have, haven't heard about. This was on Hulu. It's called Reboot. Oh yeah, dude! And, uh, Elizabeth was watching that last night. It's hilarious. Yeah, I had a had a great time. It's a it's a show about a, a sitcom that gets, like the title says, rebooted, and you have the new writer, and then her father is the showrunner from back in the day. Yeah. And of course, in the writer's room, 
the new writers clash with the old ones, considering what can you do and what can't you do. And the actors have to adjust to new stuff, stuff also. So really was really a, a nice show reboot on Hulu. And I think that's about it is okay. Only one thing that we all finally finished house of the dragon. Of course, what a great first season. Can't wait for the second one, but it will probably take two years. I, I believe until house of the dragon season two will arrive. So Rob, how did we go from here? Live chat or should I show some stuff? How do we go from oh, yeah. here? That's from Buffy. Yes, because I have to tell you, um, I have nothing to show this week. Uh, I don't know why. No, I, I'll tell you why. I don't uh, normally, you know, I buy stuff kind of later in the middle of the week. And all the things that I bought, which normally arrive on Friday or Saturday for me, because I don't have them coming out on Tuesday usually, some things I've been waiting for, uh, I didn't get them. And including something really interesting from Severin that my friend Clark Von Trotha, old high school friend that we've reconnected recently, he, he by the way, um, he has been looking for projectors for our movie room for me, and he says, he told me, this is the projector you want to get. He goes, it's only $12,000. <laughs> and I'm like, but I can get peanuts it for you for peanuts. cost. <laughs> and I'm like, great. And uh, I said, you know, the, the movie room that we have is rather small, and um, but there's enough throw between... I get up to 120 inches out of the screen. As Roland Emmerich said, size does matter on the court yeah. on the cover of Godzilla. So I have nothing to show. I got nothing to show, and I apologize for that. But you know, our friend Paul from Twin Flicks. By the way, if you haven't followed Twin Flicks, their YouTube channel, or follow them on Twitter, you should, because Paul has been doing an invaluable service for all of us. He uh, has been comparing and contrasting blu-ray releases uh previous blu-ray re releases with new 4k releases and he's doing a really good job of showing the differences and why uh w you should get the new titles like he recently did a uh, fright night which was terrific and there was a new i don't know why it escapes me he just dropped another video the other day but um watch twin flicks they're doing a good job comparing and contrasting paul sends in a tip and says oh boy yeah. rob i'm seeing posts on social media lately of people complaining that some UHD titles have been and are released in SDR and not HDR to the point they refuse to buy them, which is a real shame. Please explain to the masses SDR is not bad. Laugh out loud. Well, first of all, look, the ignorance, and this is not, I, I, I don't mean anyone who watches this show because everybody who watches this show is clearly very erudite and, and knows their shit. But there's a lot of misinformation in the world. And there's a lot of people that really don't understand how movies are transferred. Uh, but the fact that even gigantic movies, Marvel movies, were only finished in 2K. Yeah. So they have to up res them. But so Paul is asking, what is the difference between HDR versus SDR? Well, allow me to read an article. One of the biggest advances in TV technology in recent years is the development of high dynamic range video, the formats. It enhances the picture quality in movies and shows by displaying a wider range of colors with brighter highlights compared to SDR, which is standard dynamic range content. However, even if a TV accepts an HDR signal, it doesn't mean that content automatically looks good as the TV needs to display the image properly. HDR introduces a wider range of color and brightness level, levels compared to SDR. Signals, HDR signals send metadata to your TV, which is a list of instructions for the TV to display content properly. The source, your disc, tells the TV what exact color to display at which exact brightness level. Whereas SDR is limited to a range of brightness and colors. For example, with SDR, a car would be ordered to apply full throttle or 50% throttle. Instead, the HDR car would be asked to go 120 miles and then go to 40 miles per hour. Some vehicles would provide a worse experience than others working toward the task, and most might not even succeed. In the case of TVs, SDR is a specific set of power 
while HDR is a set goal. So here's the thing. I mean, having SDR, you're still getting dy a higher dynamic range. It's just kind of locked in, in, in place. Whereas S uh, HDR, you get metadata that can adjust things based on the scenes and things like that. But the problem is... You mean, you mean Dolby Vision Rule? No, no, no. Against no, a regular HDR will, with its metadata, will tell the... It's usually it's an HDR signal. Let me see if I can get this right. Is usually it, it sets things. Uh, it gives you an overall setting for the film. Dolby Vision has an HDR signal that's metadata changes from scene to scene. So the reason Dolby Vision is is so great is the Dolby Vision throughout the film is constantly changing and sending your different metadata metadata to your TV. I'm look this is a gross oversimplification because there's HDR and there's HDR there, there's SDR, HDR and HDR10. Yeah. Now I think HDR is being used as sort of a generic term, but Dolby Vision is the one that is the best because it's constantly readjusting based on scene to scene to scene. Um, the color of the 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 film, whereas HDR and a a SDR is a single setting. HDR has more latitude, but it's Dolby Vision that is the best in terms of readjusting from scene to scene to scene. So, Dolby Vision obviously is the best, but SDR is still good. It's just a single setting, though, you know, and it's not. It doesn't. It doesn't have the the latitude. It doesn't have as much metadata. It's but it's still good. Now the problem is here. Here's here's the real problem. A lot of times movies, if you want to get them, like for instance, Tango Shalom. I mastered Tango Shalom in 4K. It was shot with multiple formats, but mostly in 5K. But the 4K, we finished it in 4K. We had multiple formats in the movie. Sometimes we had up res, but but the film is done at 4K. It does not have any HDR at all, you know, that, but we did finish it in 4K. It doesn't have SDR, it doesn't have HDR, it doesn't have Dolby Vision, but it's still better than a uh, Blu-ray, it's still better than Blu-ray resol resolution than 2K resolution. So it really depends. There is no HDR version of Tango Shalom, there is no Dolby Vision version of Tango Shalom because we didn't have enough money. We didn't have the post budget to make an HDR or a Dolby Vision version of the film. And there was really no call for it because the movie was not very expensive. So having an having an SDR pass on a movie is better than not. And that might be the only thing you're ever going to get. So it really depends on, on the film, the filmmaker, where it stands. Is somebody going to pay for the, the, the movie or not? And it's, it's, it's tough. I mean, it's, it's, so no. that's, there you go. Um, but to not buy a film they might only release a film in SDR. That might be it. That might be all you're yeah. getting, and they're never going to do you have to, You have to make up your own mind. But there's a lot of people that don't understand that, that they just think, why isn't it in HDR? Because it's expensive. You have to pay for that, and you have to be in a color, to, a, a color bay where you're paying $300 an hour. And like for Dolby Vision, you have to pay for a Dolby license to master your film in Dolby Vision. It costs more money. And so who's going to do that? So you've got to, people have to take that into consideration, but they don't know. Anyway, back to you, Dietz. Back to you. Okay. Uh, go through the, through the Super Chats, Rob, that we've, we've got. Um, yeah. Oh, I've got, yeah, I've just, I've just got a few more. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, Jimon D also sent us a Super Chat and a tip. Jimon D says, since you're a big fan of James Bond, my recommendation today is a show called Garcia. It's okay. Spanish Bond-esque fantasy action, and it also seems to be based on a graphic novel. Uh, the first two episodes are so much fun. That is a show called Garcia. Jimon D does not say where or when or it's how available, Garcia okay. is available, but we'll have to look. That makes it more fun. Yeah. Um, Never heard about it. Garcia. Um, Michael Preston says, my physical media for the week is Everything Everywhere, Dr. Jekyll. The 1931 Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Now, this is a title that uh, that Warner Archive released, and George Feltenstein is incredibly proud of this release. 
Um, you know, he usually, usually waxes rhapsodic about his releases, but he was particularly excited about this restoration of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I can't wait to see it. I guess I get it tomorrow. Um, uh, can't wait. It's 91 years old, winner of two Academy Awards, one of the great horror films of the 30s, so can't wait to get that. And then uh, Michael Preston says he also has the Untouchables Steelbook, and he can't wait to watch both discs on his 100-inch projector. Let me just tell you, bro, that Untouchables transfer, ooh, boy. That gets me it gets me aroused in all the right ways, let me tell you. Great transfer. You're going to love them both. So back awesome. to you, Dietz. Okay, let me just start with some stuff that I've seen and I wanted to elaborate on. Considering Region Code's rule, while Terrifier was region free, even if it should be, I was surprised. I read it in, in our live chat and I actually checked it. The Spider Man uh, 3D from Austria is actually region B. It's not region free, which Ooh. was surprising to me, considering I thought it was just a Sony release, you know. So this is actually not region free. It's this region B, the 3D disc. We can make yeah. a song like, it ain't region free, region? it is region yeah. B. <laughs> and I'm always forgetting stuff that I wanted to talk about. I showed the movie Fall last week. Yep. And considering, Rob, the visual effects, there was a nice making of on the disc, just 15 minutes, but really quality stuff. And one thing I have, I didn't detect at all, and I wasn't expecting to be some visual trickery, was actually what the people were saying. Because when they were shooting the movie, they used a lot of the F word, you know, but they wanted to make it pitch for no, so No, no, Dieter, the F word, what's that? Yeah, that nice one. Fall? And then they ch yeah, exactly, Rob. And then they changed what the mouth are saying visually, so I wasn't detecting anything. But there was actually CGI stuff done with with what the people were saying in in fall, so they can uh, could get a PG thirteen. So this was a great thing to learn about in the making of. I had no idea. You know, we looking for how the backgrounds is, what is done with blue screen or some stuff. But that the mouse movement has been changed to say some different stuff. Insane, insane. I wish I could do Rob that with some of the conversations I've had with ex girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> to, to change it, Rob, did you did you caught up on my recommendation? Did you bought it? Uh, no, I. You know what? I didn't nah. buy that. I. I. But, yeah. but you recommend. You know, I, Rob, that the characters are annoying, but they are designed to be that way. Rob, you know? Yeah, I mean, you know what? No. It's another horror film that's done well, and people keep telling me to get it. I. I might have to capitulate, come to uh, peer pressure, and buy it. Uh, this one I checked out, I believe, on Monday. Totally great. I showed it last week from Second Sight. Mm -hmm. Bull, you know, nice revenge movie. And like you with Terrifier, Rob, the only thing, the movie looked too good, you know, too clean, even cleaner than Terrifier. Yeah. You know? So it was a nice revenge movie with a nice ending, which changed some aspects of the movie a little bit. Uh, and Rob, it's not it's not Sophie Turner in the in the movie. Considering the lobby cards I showed last week, it's it's not. But a nice, nice revenge tale, Bull, Rob. The UK. And last week, Tom from Midnight's Edge was in the live chat and he told us about the uh, uh, wrong audio on Escape from LA. Yeah. Considering the the voices are all, all over the place in all channels. But in the live chat, he said the European release has is correct. And since I have had the German version of Escape from LA, I checked it, Rob, and he's right. Right. So this is actually, it's okay, Rob. There's uh, not a problem with this. So I'm going to go buy the German release. Now, now okay. does does that just mean Escape from L.A.? Because that's you tell me that German titles have to yeah. be literal. Yeah. It actually means that, Rob. Flucht aus L.A. It actually is a correct translation. Okay. Well, there for, you go. For once, Rob. For, for once, you know. <laughs> so let me just start with two titles that I put aside last week because the show was already three hours long and we did have a lot to show. So I keep them for this show, because we always have Korean stuff, but I didn't show it last week. First one, actually, a cat in the back. It's called just Dead Man's, Dead Man's Spray. It's a little bit... What a great box. Very, very black. So it's a little 
little digi, which you see. And it comes here with a nice like postcard, which is actually signed. I don't know if it's the director or wow. some of the cast. So here is what it what the digi looks like. That's cool. It's really good. Have, did that, you, wow. Did you watch that yet? Yeah, unfortunately not. And what's what's great is Rob, there is a booklet, but it's you can't can't take it out. It's actually attached to the release. Wow, is that is that inside a plane? Is that a bunch of dead people inside a plane? Um uh, no Rob, it looks more like a tunnel. Like a oh, tunnel. okay. Darn, okay. But is it a bunch of dead people? I hope so, Rob. <laughs> okay. The movie is called Deadman, Deadman Spray, but I haven't haven't gotten around to it. So this is from my friends in Korea. Cat, little cat in the back. So let me just put it aside here. The next one I already showed months back. It's uh, I think a French uh, release, but I'm always considering Korean movies. I like to get. The Korean release of it. This is the one Rob called the Battleship Island. Got a got a Korean release, which is actually a little a little thick one. Yeah. Yeah. And it comes like Deadman Spray with the booklet is attached. Nice. To okay, that's I like that. That's to, cool. Yeah. So this is the whole Shebang for the movie. Now is so that a is that an three, old is that an old is, film or is that a new film? No, Rob, it's not an old film. It's uh, I think it's from last or two years back, Battleship okay. Island, where they. Uh, oh, I remember. I think uh, we talked about Battleship Island yeah. on this show. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Rob. Because I showed the French steelbook that I yeah. totally loved. The first, the first uh, version I got was the German one, but it was was just a standard MRA. So nothing really special to it, but I love the movie. And the French had a nice steelbook for it. Right. Uh, but this is the nice Korean release of Battleship Battleship Island. Exactly. So this was the two that last week I didn't get around to show. So the next one, a little media book from Germany. I know the movie was controversial, but the US release was, as far as I remember, was not a 4K release. And I'm, I said, okay, it's a little bit controversial, the movie perhaps, but there's stuff in it that I won't forget. So I got the German exclusive media book from Amazon of Men from Ooh, Alex Garland. You know, I have to tell you, know? you, I'm an Alex Garland fan and I didn't love this movie. I bought the movie, yeah, I but I, I will say this. I did find it fascinating. Yeah, totally. And there's stuff in it, Rob. It's always great when you say, I won't forget that, you know, no matter right. what you what you think about a movie. Nothing's worse than when a movie is forgettable. So, German media book for men in 4K. I like the Just cover the 4K art. And the 4K and the Blu-ray. It's a, It did came out here, Rob, as a steel book, I believe, and two media books. This is the 4K media book, and I believe, an, no, it was, it was two... Two 4K media books, but with different cover artwork. This is the Amazon exclusive one, with the, you know, with the nice hand splitting, splitting stuff from the movie. Uh, let me just see some cat in the backs. Rob, uh, this one I just ordered this week. Cat in the back, Ghost Mask Scar, which is let me just see, it is a Japanese movie. Japanese All right. Movie. So I hope it's a. Uh, it's good, and it should be hopefully uncut. <laughs> the next one, Cat in the Back with Josh Duhamel. You know, the people will know him probably mostly from the Transformers movies. Nick Nolde is in it too, but probably direct to video. Yeah, a little bit mediocre, I expect. Blackout. It's not the Lime Diesel movie. Blackout <laughs> in in 4K. At least it's a it's a 4K. Disc. That looks like a perfect Dieter Bastian movie. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. that's right in, right up your alley. Will, that's, that's exactly will, what you look for. I get back to it when I have watched it. This one I pre-ordered. I have no idea how long back that pre-order uh, um, is going, but finally the movie came out. 
a sci-fi film, Rob. I don't know if you have heard of it. Project Gemini. No. Heard some, heard some good things about it, but didn't get around to watch it. It's uh, already out in the States, I believe. It took a very long time. I already forgotten, you know, it didn't show, show up in the, in the pre-order stuff. And I thought, oh, they, they shipped out Project Gemini. I totally, totally forgot, forgot about that one. <laughs> Project Gemini. Then, Rob, you showed it last week already. Even if you don't have stuff, you already showed it. But this is the Steelbook edition. And at first, when I saw the cover artwork, I wasn't too fond of it. But now that I hold it in my hands, it's actually, it's shiny, Rob. Rob bullet train. It's That's cool. cool. Uh, I, by the way, the, the, that disc, the 4K disc, is spectacular. It's a, it's a, totally, Rob. Even, even on my display. It's I was beautiful. Totally, and beautiful. Rob, uh, the movie did a nice bump for me seeing it a second time when I knew all the characters, you know, uh, it was a little bit too overflown at the, at the, first right. piece, yeah. uh, <laughs> the first watch, but with the second watch, it totally clicked with me. And strangely, Rob, I can't remember uh, when I had a disc that is region coded Rob B and C considering just the Blu-ray <clears throat> since wow. it's a Sony worldwide release. And actually Rob, it is BC. I, Throw it in my code A player, it doesn't play. So why this uh, the normal Blu-ray here is region coded BC? Uh, I have no idea. I know region code B, region code A, ABC, but just BC uh, seemed a little bit strange to me. Yeah, region coding is weird to me. I mean, look, I understand yeah. it's a vestige of the way how things work, but um, it's silly. I think it's silly, but I get why. I understand. But like you said, Rob, great quality stuff from Sony again. With this oh, Sony, their transfers, I mean, there's a reason, you know, the, the, the projector that my friend Clark wants me to get is a, is a new Sony laser projector. And um, you know what, though? You know what's really interesting? Um, you cannot yet get Dolby Vision uh, on projectors. They've got okay. HDR projectors, but not Dolby Vision because I don't think, I mean... They're not, you know, with like a, a, a OLED screen, each pixel can be told what to do. I don't think that's true right now of like a laser projector. So that's kind of interesting. By the way, um, uh, let me see. Let me go back to where I was. Um, where was I? I just, um, we, uh, a Jimon D says that that show yeah. that he was talking about, Garcia. Okay. He says it's on HBO Max. Okay. And he has another question okay. to both of us. What, this is a good question. What is your most prized box set or movie? Ooh. Prized box set. I bet you can guess my answer. Yeah, the Dawn of the Dead from Second Side. I, I would, no question. Would just, I mean, was was just imagine, it's probably a uh, 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 Chimon too, too many, too many to. I mean, there's to so list. many. I mean, obviously, to, to, pick, uh, to pick one, to pick one out, you know. The 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 second sight. Now you you can't get it. It's out of print. The the big box. You can still yeah. get it from second sight the smaller, but that big. I never thought in my lifetime that because Dawn of the Dead is one of my favorite movies of all time, and to see the the quality getting the three different versions and 4k and all the special features and and still they didn't they don't have everything there are still people purists are gonna say well rob they're missing something off the elite well, i get it but it is my the the even the box itself you know because that's part of it second yeah. sight with that matte finish the way that i mean i i look at it like an object do art it's right up there i, I you know i have it right actually i just move things around I keep going back and forth. I had drive on the same yeah. thing, but then I've got the turbine American werewolf that you sent me next to Dawn of the Dead right now. Awesome. Keeps changing. But that's the, the the second sight, Dawn of the Dead, big box set, the limited edition box set's my favorite physical media release of all time. But chime in, you can always check with the two of us at the end of the year where we both show our top tens of the yeah. year. What were what our favorite releases of this year you know but do and, you have yeah. do you have uh um do you have um 
a favorite that's off. I mean, I've had lots of box <sighs> sets. That, like I loved it, it. I love the 50th anniversary Bond collection that came out. Yeah. You know, there's you know, I things... love my, my, my Terminator 2 box set, of course. Well, because you've got a lot of that. Is that the Czechoslovakian one? Yeah, exactly. Exactly, Rob. I didn't like. I, I didn't even know that existed, and I think yeah. I I never got it, which kills me. But the alien head, yeah, the Japanese, you have it, right? Yeah, but this was a DVD release, of right? But still, but still, yeah. I mean, it's cool. But Rob, when I when I when you first started the show, and I thought, look at look at look at Mister Bennett. He has that that same that same head that I have, and then you showed it. Oh no, this is not that what. I was thinking the head was. <laughs> no, it's a one to one. But I wish I had yeah. yours. Not that I'm complaining, but you know, my my uh, uh, yours looks a little bit better, Rob. <laughs> it's but still. But the idea, the idea was great in in the head to put the discs in in the head. That was great. Oh yeah, totally. Um. Um. Other super chats. Yeah, there are there. Oh, uh, okay. eucalyptus says. Yeah. What are your thoughts on Slumdog Millionaire? Jai Ho. I love Slumdog love Millionaire. Yeah. Totally. It's great. Uh, <clears throat> great movie. But it, it is not available on 4K, I believe. Am I wrong? I don't think it is. Well, I you know, maybe because you know Danny Danny Boyle yeah. was one of the first people that adopted shooting on video, like twenty eight days later. Yeah. You know, and and uh so I don't know if they can even. There are some movies that I I, I would imagine will will never see 4K, no, just because just, they, they especially in the digital age. In the, the, yeah, the like cameras. like I don't I don't imagine that um, a lot of the um, Dutch the pardon me the Danish the the Danish films you know like a celebration, all the stuff that Lars von Trier was doing back in the that what was it called the Dogma ninety five movement, you know when they had to use available light and whatever was there. So there was there's a lot of those movies that were made that are just you could you could put them in 4K. Like I, I have to say, I, I I don't I I don't have it yet. I don't have it in hand. I'm really curious to see what Severin's version of the Changeling. I love the Changeling, the 1980 Peter Medak ghost story with George C. Scott. But that film is incredibly. I I watched it the other day because I was calibrating my TV and it's very grainy, especially the beginning is very very grainy. And I'm curious to see what it looks like in 4K. Um, you know, I mean, obviously we've talked about, it's been fun going back and, and looking through my 4K collection. And, and now that I've got this 4K OLED calibrated in the room, to go back and watch all my 4K discs to see, because there is a pretty wide range of things. Um, but the stuff I like are the old photochemical movies that are remastered, Apocalypse yeah. Now, Die Hard, Matrix, anything that was finished in, on film looks incredible but then i mean i think like dune dune is spectacular spectacular and that was shot yeah. digitally i think that the digital digital process gotten better with you know with with more years you know? <clears throat> oh yeah the resolutions it, it it's yeah. it's it's incredible so but anyway um uh so some dog millionaire i dig it and justin toner our friend justin says justin Justin says, uh, hi, guys. Congrats on the Kino Lorber deal. As I told Dieter, I watched Poltergeist 4K, and it's gorgeous. I got everything everywhere all at once in 4K, too. I am on the hunt nice. for that. I really want that special Kino. I, I ordered it from Zavi, and uh, that's another thing I'm waiting on, my 4K Videodrome. Did you okay. get that? Uh, no, but it's uh, on the way, I believe, Rob. Yo, so, but you ordered it. Yeah, yeah I, I did too. I don't have I, I, that is coming, and and um, something else is coming. It's it's in transit, but um, I'm very curious. I bet that movie that movie has a great look to it. I bet that movie looks incredible <clears throat> in 4K. Nice. But um, I'm looking for the Poltergeist box set because Zavi yeah. they said they were going to ship it. They were going to ship it. They were going to ship it, and then they said they ran out. So that uh, was a bummer. That and the Lost Boys. Totally. So. Did you, by the way, did you send the Lost Boys out to our Vic? The Lost Boys is on its way to the to the winner of the contest last wow. week. Rob. Okay. It's, it's out. But it will probably take two or three weeks until uh, Lee will get it. But he yeah. knows it, Rob. I, yeah. I, I um, informed him all over Instagram. So uh, Justin says he also watched Poltergeist in 4K and it's gorgeous. And he also got awesome. everything everywhere all at once in 4K as well. 
Everything Everywhere and All at Once won a Saturn Award this week. Yeah. Our friend Cliff Stevenson. Cliff. Yep. Cliff, Cliffy, Clifford Boy, Clifford, or as I like to call him, Geek Santa, because he just sometimes he just buys stuff for you and sends it to you, or I would live too far away, but sometimes there was stuff just on my doorstep and he would bring me things. But congratulations to Cliff Stevenson and his lovely wife, Lisa, and she is truly lovely. And uh, that the, the whole Stevenson family, because they take home yet another Saturn Award, which is fantastic. I mean, I've only won two uh, on home video. <laughs> I've won one for Free Enterprise, so I'm a three-time Saturn winner. But uh, Cliffy Boy won for everything, everywhere, all at once. So that's uh, awesome. very, very cool. So congrats, Cliff. Here's to you, buddy. Um, so everything, everywhere, all at once on 4K, great disc. Really, really yeah. good disc. Good special features. Um Congrats to Cliff and the whole fam. So that's good, right? Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Are we um, caught up? Real? Sorry. Yeah, we're caught up there. We're okay. caught up with Super Chats. So you told us about Dress to Kill will probably get censored these days or... Cancelled. You know. Cancelled, exactly, Rob. And yesterday, <clears throat> Rob, I watched this, which was like another classic, you know, I got but the shiny Rob raw deal, or as it called in Germany, Rob, uh, the city, the city shark, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and the strange thing, Rob, I started the movie, and there was a notice before the movie started, Rob. Please note that this film reflects historical attitudes, which audience might find outdated or offensive. You know, unbelievable. And considering you're not always happy with the Studio Canal stuff, considering Basic Instinct, here they put a title card in front of the movie, which said, this forecast duration was produced in 2022 by Studio Canal using a specific combination of different 35 millimeter original elements, scanned 4K, 16-bit, numerous scratches, physical damage, and dust were erased frame by frame, and the color grading was completed at VDM Laboratory France. This project was brought to you by Studio Canal, so they gave him a little bit. That's very cool. About what is this. And the stra one of the strangest things, look, I've watched the movie yesterday, and I can't remember this. In the steelbook, there is this pictures with Arnie putting on a fake mustache, which is actually not really in the movie at all. Wow, that's, I have I no mean... idea. That happens a lot. Well, you know, there's scenes that get edited out, but yeah. but they had the still photographer on set that day. Yeah. So that's not unusual, but that's cool. I like when they do that. Yeah. yeah. So, raw deal. And I was really Rob, not expecting that the movie informed me, please don't feel offended when you watch <laughs> raw deal. But okay. So, uh, the next one, I think, Rob, you showed it last, last week. Return. Oh, the Living Dead. Have you put and, that in yet? Okay. Boy, yeah, does that look good. Really, yeah, it was really, really nice one. Uh, that is some taste. Actually, I was surprised, Rob, that it's actually a three, a three disc, a three yeah. disc uh, uh, set. So really nice. What Screen Factory showed is releasing. Here. Really great disc. Again. Yeah. This one, Rob, was a recommendation for me. I don't know if you gotten around to watch it or even bought it. It came out here as a 4K media book. One of my uh, favorite westerns of the year, Old Henry. Oh wow! You know Which, I haven't seen. I heard that movie was really good. I haven't yeah, seen it. And don't forget it, Rob. It has an aspect ratio like spare change would say two sixty six to one. So really, Ooh. really, really wide. Like, like once upon a time in yeah. the west. Yeah. And or pardon me, how the west was won. That's what I meant to say. Yeah. Going blind, totally great western. Stephen Dorff is in it, you know, and it's always great. Uh, let me uh, just uh, look it up here. Uh, Tim Blake Nelson. By the way, I'm having a lead. Halloween beer, just so you know, Imperial IPA. Mm, nice. Uh, and it's nice that Tim Blake Nelson plays the lead. He's usually uh, stuck in uh, supporting roles, and here it's great that he plays the lead. Yeah. Really great Western, Rob. Still a recommendation. And here's this is a 4K media book, which came out in Germany. Totally great western. Then I've uh, already gotten the Sonic 2 steelbook because I was really surprised that I loved the movie. And then Rob in Italy, <laughs> but I didn't bought the first 
one as a steelbook. Okay. But Italy came through with me, Rob, and they put both steelbooks. Wow, look at that. In one. Now, that's pretty edition. dope. That packaging is dope. Let's hear it yeah. for the Italians and but, the French, man. They're always doing cool shit. By the way, for any of our French fans know, out there, if there's any, I need the French to live and die in L.A. book. I had ordered it once. That's another thing. I got screwed over. Amazon France said they sent it. I never got it. They said, we're really sorry. They refunded my money. Look at that. So that's Italian? Yeah. But it's, it's uh, it uh, does come out here as well. Because I didn't get the steelbook of the first one. Uh, because I liked the first one when I watched it on, on Paramount Plus. But uh, wasn't really going to, to, to buy it. But then the, the second one really, really surprised me. You know what I just realized? I do have something to show. Okay. But I'll, I'll wait till you're done. So those two the only the only drawback is that we'll probably get a get a third a third one. So this box will not contain everything. So Rob then I stop a little and let me take over this this the one. Well I have to grab I have to grab so so People send stuff. We have a P.O. box okay. in Iowa where Mike Bodden is. And yeah. shout out to Mike Bodden. He fell off a ladder last week uh, doing ho housework. He fell eight feet on the concrete. He broke five ribs, punctured his lung. His scapula was shattered. Um, he is getting better. But he sent me, before he did this, he sent me a box of stuff that has been sent to our um, our um, uh, uh, P.O. Your box. Your P.O. box. And there was a disc in there that somebody told me I was. Hang on, I have to. I have to grab yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. So no problem. Hang on. No problem. I will just do a little bit of the of the live chat. So previously on Let's Get Physical Media, there was Paul Nolan, and he said one of my favorite bands, Arch Enemy, are playing Saarbrücken, Deutschland tonight. You should have gone. And uh, yes, Paul, they played on Monday, I believe, and it was a little bit of a metal festival they played in Saarbrücken. Eucalyptus, my second favorite German. So what is your what is your favorite Eucalyptus? And then, of course, we talked a little bit about Halloween ends. And of course, people jumped in. Eucalyptus, Halloween hates. Kenneth Colton, Halloween ends was a disgrace. You know, and Tom Jr. Jackson said... We all know Dita is going to buy the steel book. No, Tom, considering Halloween ends, I will not buy it. Gordon Waddell, Halloween ends was awful. Uh, Kenneth Colton, worst film I've seen in 10 years. Rob, I'm going through the, through the live chat a little bit. I didn't Gary realize Benjus I've Sandwich. got more than I thought in this box. Oh, <laughs> Gary Benjo Sandwich, Worthington. Halloween sucks, you know. Star Wars, and no glue. I chickened out of Halloween ends. So I saw the invitation, but he probably doesn't mean Rob's little movie invitation, the new one that is ours in Yeah, not theater. Karen Kusama's from 2015. No, no. And of course, people chimed in considering Black Adam. Donnie Pearson, I have seen Black Adam yesterday. Oh, what fun. Don't worry. I always avoid spoilers unless otherwise. Kenneth Colton, Black Adam was disappointing. Yeah, it had some cool action, but the story was awful. The Alex Sorber, Black Adam is a blast. Okay. The Alex Sorber criterion does seem to we had a, a, a topic of criterion laying off people and considering what they are releasing. The Alex Sorber criterion does seem to ignore market often, but that's what makes them criterion. Okay. <laughs> it's true. Uh, and the Alex Sorber continues, I simply treat critics the way I have for the most for most of my life, completely ignore them. I am the one who decides what I watch and what I buy. Uh, exactly. And Kenneth Colton, Black Adam's skateboard kit was cringe. Eucalyptus, uber cringe. And Kenneth again, he had more screen time than The Rock did. <laughs> 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 Our friend from Latinx, Roberto Suarez. I think I'll wait for Black Adam for hit to hit HBO Max. Roberto, I probably too. But not that I wouldn't want to see the movie. It doesn't play here once again in English and I don't want to see Twain dubbed. I, that is a no-go uh, <laughs> for me. Uh, the Alex Sorma again. I think that's still a, uh, about Black Adam. I hoped it would be much better but I still got a kick out of it. Hopefully the trend continues and people go for another weekend so we get more. So the drop was not that extensive Alex Sorma. 
let's see what the Chinese people think about mm. Black Adam. Roman Schober, dumb question. Is Dida a metalhead? And luckily, I don't have to answer that because wait, people wait, like wait, 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 wait. Is Dieter a metalhead? Yeah. Come on, I I want to go full frame. Give me a metal. Give me a metal stance. Give me one of your. Come on, give me. You're at a you're at a metal. Yeah, there you go. Wait, stay there. Somebody get a frame frame grab of that. All right, there we go. That's pretty metal. But I have good. people in the chats that I already answered that. Star Wars, I no clue. Yes, Dieter loves the metal sound considering elvis slice night catherine was in the chat that was a great movie austin butler austin butler was fantastic and then like i said victor fontaine i read it on the in the live chat yeah the problem is that spider-man 3d is region b locked won't play here in the states and i really checked it was surprised that it actually is video under d elvis starts with the 90s star trek experience side didn't rob work on that rob can you tell us a little bit i did about you about it uh so yeah i mean i i I, yes so for those of you who don't know because it's not there anymore there was an 80 million dollar themed attraction that was at the hilton in las vegas um it was incredible so the the attraction basically had two parts there was the ride the immersive ride experience and there was the star trek museum that was the first floor, and then underneath was Quark's Bar and a gift shop. So what I was I was hired. This is an interesting thing. This 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 goes to show you, kids, you never know. So I had made a. I was working on a project, and I had a a day left in the Avid, and I was writing for a magazine called Sci Fi Universe Magazine. I was a critic at large, and Mark Altman, who I made Free Enterprise with, this is pre pre Free Enterprise. Um, I made a a video, it's like a five minute um, video called Star Trek Eternal. Now you can look it up; it's on YouTube. And there's a piece of music that John Williams wrote called "The '60s: The Tumultuous Decade" that was from the Nixon soundtrack, and they used it in the trailer um, for the for Oliver Stone's Nixon. And I always thought, I'm like, wow, this is a really great piece of music, and I wanted to cut something Star Trek to it. So I basically had a day; I had to finish in a day. So whatever laser discs or tapes that Mark and I had on hand, I just cut together this montage. It was done. It took a long time to to go through all the stuff and 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 uh, digitize all the footage, but then I cut it together very quickly because I didn't have much time to do it. And I put it together, and we used it f- uh, as a montage that we played at the Sci Fi Universe Awards, our second Sci, which was a big red carpet event, and Major Barrett was there, Gene Roddenberry's wife, and. We gave her an award because it was the 30th anniversary of Star Trek. It was 1996 and all that. So um, I'd made this tape. And then everybody wanted, because this was pre-YouTube, everybody wanted this montage. So I was sending out, (laughs) I must have sent out, I mean, I was charging people, I think, like 25 bucks because I had to go buy five-minute videotapes and copy it and then send them out to people. And I must have sent out 200 copies of that tape over the summer. Like everybody wanted that tape, and I mean, unfortunately, it's it's really bad quality because it was the very first thing I ever uploaded to YouTube. So it's called Star Trek Eternal. It's on my it's on Robert Meyer or Robert Burnett's channel, whatever. I'm sorry for the bad quality, and it was taken off a damaged VHS tape. So there's a bzz in the middle of it. But so I did this, and then like a year later, I get a phone call from Landmark Entertainment, and they're like, "Are you?" Because I had put my name. Uh, on the front of the tape and my f- contact information. So they call me up and I'd heard of Landmark Entertainment because they had done like the T2 3D attraction at Universal and they they asked me to come down and I go to their office on Magnolia. You know, it was, it was two, it, Landmark took up two stories in North Hollywood in this building on the corner of, of um, Magnolia and um, Lancashire. And it was so funny. I go into this interview and there's a, like a wall of three quarter inch videotapes of all the st- at the time all the original series and next generation episodes. So seventy nine, or actually it was eighty because it had the cage. So it was eighty uh, tapes of T- TOS and one hundred and seventy eight episodes of TNG. And this is the interview is like, oh, we really like your little montage. How well do you know Star Trek? And I said, well, I know it pretty well. <laughs> 
And and they're like, the, the guy says to me, I forget his name, but I remember this clear as yeah. day. He says, if I was going to look for, say, a scene where a Klingon stabs a Romulan, like, where would I look? And I said, and I wasn't trying to be cheeky. I said, I would go to the sixth season, Next Generation episode, Birthright Part 2. And, and he just looks at me like I was pulling his chain. And I'm like, no, I explained it's a two-part episode. There's a Klingon prison colony, and there is a tussle with between a Klingon and a Romulan, but I don't actually remember if a Klingon, if the Klingon gets a blow-in or the Romulan. I don't know if the Romulan stabs a Klingon. I'm not sure, but there is a fight with bladed weapons involved. <laughs> and he just, he thought I was lying to him because I just tossed it off. And I go, it's, you know, it's yeah. sixth season. And um, he's he basically said to me right after that, he thought about it for a couple minutes. He goes, okay, you're hired. And so for the next year and a half, all I did, I had to first digitize, because at the time, before you could edit anything, you have to digitize the footage into a computer. And at the time, I was using an Avid, so and it was real time. So for the first four or five months of this job, all I did, and I got paid, I think I was getting paid seventeen fifty a week, 1750 bucks. My day consisted of watching eight to ten episodes of Star Trek, where I just, I just loaded, put in the tape, digitized it. Dream job, bro. Dream it job. Was, I tried to explain to my mom that I got this job, and she's like, what? So, and at the same time, this is my favorite thing. So they built a 20-foot model of the motion picture enterprise from Star Trek the motion picture, the refit. But in order to... For reference, they had shipped down from ILM the eight-foot visual effects model of the Enterprise that was built for Star Trek The Motion Picture, perhaps the greatest model ever built for a movie. And it was it was at our office. So I was down, it was across the, the courtyard. So I would go, I would go and eat lunch next to the actual eight-foot model of the Enterprise that was built for Star Trek The Motion Picture. <laughs> I mean, this job Dream was so, through. it was so, and and I started uh, having an affair, not an affair, she wasn't married, but there was a girl, this girl, Linda, who worked there, so we were kind of, we kind of got involved, and she worked on the project, too. So the whole the whole job was all good. <laughs> it was an all, right. it was an all great, it was either, I was either watching Star Trek, eating lunch on the Enterprise, or, you know, going out with Linda or staying in the office with Linda, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> there was nothing bad about this job. It was fantastic. And then... How, how long was the experience available in Las Vegas? It was it was there from, I want to say it opened in 97, and it was there It was there for at least 12 years or something. But the coolest part, the coolest thing that happened during the time is Dave DeVos, who I was working with, we had to make a ride film because there's a simulator. So one of the things, some of the things they did... They built a full, part of the attraction was you went into this room and you were beamed on to the Enterprise D. So they actually built a full-scale transporter room and how it worked was, and this was absolutely incredible. You walked into this pretty nondescript room and there was a, a pulley system and a counterweight and suddenly it would look like you were beaming, you know, it would it, the lights would thing. The, and, and it would go black, and you, but you could feel what would happen is the room that you were in, the walls were hoisted up into the air, and the ceiling slid over, and you couldn't see because the flashing lights. But what you felt was when they lifted up the walls, a, and this they didn't anticipate this when they made it because it wasn't on the design specs. They couldn't have known this. There was a whoosh of air. So when they put... So the whoosh of air came up and it was unlike, you never felt anything like this because it came from all around you. So the conceit was that you've been beamed onto the Enterprise and and the, the lights would stop blinking and then you were you were on the Enterprise D transport platform. There was people in, there were actors, but they were in Starfleet uniforms. And then you would be taken out and walk down this promenade. It was inc it was incredible. It was completely immersive. They took you into a turbo lift, and they you went in the turbo lift, and you got out on the bridge of the Enterprise D, and it was a perfect three dimensional recreation of the Enterprise D, and you you saw like a Riker and a Klingon were on the view screen, and the Klingons were they wanted somebody in your party who was a descendant, yeah. Picard to be descended there. It was absolutely incredible 
the whole ride thing, it was it was so immersive. It was so, and it really, when you went through this transporter effect, you didn't know how, it was truly magical. And it truly felt unbelievably immersive. I mean, now we have things like Rise of the Resistance, but to go there, and then all the actors that played their parts were amazing. And they actually built two bridges. They had two bridges so they could get people through. But it was incredible. So what I did was I edited, before you got to the ride, you had to go through a Star Trek museum. Yeah. And there were three I remember giant, that, Rob. Yeah, there were three giant videos that played. I, I edited all the videos that played at the attraction. Now, they updated them later because they did the Borg experience. But So that's what I did for like a year and a half. And Linda was in charge of this girl that I was dating or whatever was involved with was doing the Star Trek Museum. And it was a mix of real props and recreations of like Nomad and from the original series. It was like the greatest job ever. And yeah. um, I, I I loved it so much. It was so much fun to do. So, And the reason I got the job was because somebody had that tape of Star Trek Eternal. You know, they I don't know how they got it. It showed up at Landmark, and they're like, "This is the guy who who should." So you never know when you make something. You seems if pe you pe seems to know one or two things about about the series. One or you two know, things. although I want to point out, I want to point out, I before I got this job, I was a paid Star Trek consultant for Viacom licensing, but I would like to point out that since then, no one who currently works in the Star Trek franchise. Has ever called the last, I mean, I worked on the Blu-rays, all the documentaries that we yeah. did for TNG and Enterprise. That was another job that lasted three years, which was fantastic. So Star Trek professionally has been very, very good to me, but I've never actually worked on Star Trek before. Never worked on, I don't think they'd ever hire me now, even though Star Trek Picard season three, <laughs> thumbs up, people. Stop. Okay. <laughs> Big thumbs up. That was a long answer. By the way, can I just say one other thing? Yeah. Blue Rock, okay. no. Blue Rock 1701 yeah. says he's going to a fathom showing of 2002's Godzilla versus Mechagodzilla on November 3rd. It's never been shown in U.S. theaters, and my theater is sold out. I can't wait. First of all, I love that movie. I love the 2002 Godzilla versus Mechagodzilla. That's awesome. Going to Godzilla movies in the theater is some of the most fun you'll ever have in a theater. I saw Godzilla Final Wars at the Chinese theater with all the cast the main cast of the movie. They'd come to America to show it. They had a big, it was crazy. All the actresses were in these traditional kimonos and the audience was screaming. I think the Japanese, the Japanese people were freaking out like, why, we're on Hollywood Boulevard and why are, why are the Americans screaming at all the fight? It was the best, it was, it was, it was the second greatest theatrical experience I've ever had only behind Friday the 13th 3D. 13th spot free. Yeah. yeah, but it was amazing. So go, you're going to love it. And then Michael Preston says, he forgot to mention, oh, Michael Preston says, I forgot to mention my Schnepchen Ooh, on the Star nice. Trek original movies box set for $90. And why not go with an ultra short throw projector? Be well, because they're not as good. They're good, but they're not as good. <laughs> and on the projector I want, $12,000. Uh, hopefully um, Clark can get it for me for cost. But it's not as good. But a short throw projector, there's good stuff there. There's some good stuff there. Nice. So we're caught up. Oh, wait. Nope. There's one more thing yeah. from Jimon G G D. Jimon D says, uh, for classic movies, let's say from the 30s to the 50s, that have not been released on any format yet, do you think it's better to put it on Blu-ray than 4K? I understand 4K is superior quality, but it's also expensive. For uh, So for most people... Uh, who want it, are they able to at least get it? Well, I think that's, Jaiman, I think that's a very good question. I think all movies should be, per, in the digital age, you should go at the highest resolution possible. Because remember, this is probably the only time, and, and George Feltenstein will tell you, that many of the movies that have been made, um, a lot of them have never been put on video. A lot of, like, more than, like, I think he told me 70% of Warner Brothers catalog has never been put on any format ever. No one's ever seen these films. I think that they should be preserved at 4K. They can be down converted to Blu-ray or even DVD because DVD is still a vibrant format. But where they're going to go live is on streaming services. I mean, look, physical media is going to die. And it's probably going to die before the end of this decade. And there's not going to be players manufactured. And, and I don't see that a lot of people are going to be putting out movies It'll all be going to streaming. 
the people that are buying movies, I mean, the numbers don't lie. They're plummeting. I mean, between 15 to 25% every year. Yeah, we're the diehards, but even the people that collected soundtrack albums, like Lucas Kendall would have told you that 10 years ago, there were, there were 3,000 people in the world that would buy every single soundtrack CD that was released. That number's down to about 1,000. Yeah. Because we don't live in a world, nobody cares. So who's going to buy that? And and the next generation coming up, I mean, they horror collectors will collect them as artifacts and genre fans will collect stuff, but who's going to buy the new George Clooney, Julia Roberts movie on Blu-ray or 4K? Not many yeah. people because there's no reason to. Unless you're, the whole point about these formats is if, especially 4K, if you have a great TV and a great sound system, you know, you're getting the best possible version of that. But as pipelines get bigger and bigger and there's less and less compression, or maybe ne there never will be, these streaming services is where everything's going to go to live. So I think all films should be remastered at the highest possible resolution. And 4K to me seems the end of that because human eyesight isn't much better than 4K anyway. So... You know, really, I mean, I don't know. Are we going to still be watching movies in 100 years? I don't know. But it's a great question. So now we're caught up. Okay, we are caught up. Then just a little jump back to the live chat from last week. Lord Toth, Deeds always has the coolest stuff. Well, I don't know. Rob, what was in your package that you got? Mm. Okay, so this is surprising. Uh let me read. I've got some physical media here, and a lot of the time it does come. This comes from this comes to me from Tracy Scott in Waiawa, Waiawa, Hawaii. And there's a letter. <clears throat> uh, Dear Rob, thumbing through my CD collection recently, I ran across a couple of extra copies of what you now hold, not just physical media, but homemade physical media. Ooh. I've always been a huge fan of film scores, and when EMI released a compilation of Bond themes back in 2008, well, frankly, it wasn't good enough, so I made my own. Before Pandora and Spotify and music streaming in general made mixtapes kind of obsolete, I put together the enclosed double CD collection of themes and extras, complete with liner notes, custom artwork, and even laser-printed CDs. I gave out copies as Christmas gifts to friends and family members I knew would appreciate them, but I had a few left over. This one is now yours. Uh, FYI, some of the views expressed in the text do not reflect how I feel today. I have become a Lazenby convert and would have loved to have seen a second outing with him. Enjoy our friend Some Old Guy in Hawaii. Uh, here it is. Nice. Here it is. Look at this. Ooh. Wow, this is uh, some old guy in Hawaii went all out. And of course, I love my Bond theme. So here's the, uh, here's here, I'll go full frame on this so you can see the stuff. Yeah. Um, this is awesome. This is homemade. What a cool cover. Let me open this up and see what's in here. Uh, it even says, check it out, even custom liner notes. Okay. And then uh, here are the discs. What's really interesting is, I don't know if you can really see, but these discs are not like, CD-ROM discs. This has all got printed. This is all like very slick and professional. And I still have about a thousand CDs, so this will fit. Wow, even different colors. Uh, this is well, some old guy in Hollywood in Hawaii. I always say Hollywood. Um, and then here's his booklet that he made. Um, wow, and these. This is extensive. I mean, check this out, man. This is pretty. I love that he wrote liner notes now. Now I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see if some old guy in uh, Hawaii. I'm gonna read one of my favorite Bond songs. Whatever he says about this, I don't care what anyone says. I've been defending the song since it came out. It's one of my very favorite Bond theme songs. Thong, it's one of my very favorite Bond theme songs, and that's of course "Another Way to Die" by Jack White and Alicia Keys from Quantum of Solace. Here's what. Here's what he says. While while this theme actually has a lot of elements going for it, it is ruined by its lack. Okay. Listen, man, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for your contribution. I will cherish, I will cherish this, uh, 
this this set. I love my Bond music, and I'm going to read all of your liner notes. But uh, you know, you know, you had you had one chance. You had one chance. Uh, this is fantastic, though. Thank you for this. I appreciate that. Let's see what else came. Now this, uh, Justin Maynard, Justin Maynard in Baxter, Tennessee, sends me now this sends me a Blu-ray. I do not have this Blu-ray. The the Space Battleship Yamato movie from... Um, I have other iterations of this movie, but I don't have this one. And this looks like it's from... Uh, uh, yes, the live-action movie from 2010. This looks like it's from Australia. I think it's from Australia. Yeah, it looks Australian. This is very cool. Uh, thank you so much for this. I very much appreciate it. Um, and it is, it looks Australian, which is great because you know us, Dieter, we, and I love my space battleship Yamato. So thank you for that. Um, now this, this does not have a note on it. This it was shipped to post geek singularity. Um, uh, but this is awesome. I did not buy this, but I've seen this movie and it's awesome. The outfit with Mark Rylance, this is a great, great movie. Yeah, I don't own this movie until now. I don't know who sent this movie to me because it comes. F I didn't. I've never even heard of Groove. Oh, it's from. It went to Bettendorf, Iowa, but it comes from Groove Entertainment delivered. There's no note. So whoever sent this to me, thank you for this. I want to have this, uh, which is great. It, yeah, it came directly from Groove. And now somebody's been asking me about this. Uh, Kelvin. Kelvin Wellborn from Kevin Wellborn. Kevin. Oh, Kevin. Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. Kevin knows I wanted to get this set really, really badly. And when I went to get it, it was sold out. The Michael Caine, Harry Palmer, 60s series from Imprint. Of course, it does have the Ipcris file, Funeral in Berlin, and Billion Dollar Brain. Spy thrillers from the 60s. Look at this. Now, there is Kevin. Kevin did, uh, he did send me a note. And I will read it. Oh, it's not a very long note. Uh, Dear Robert, I heard you missed out on the Harry Palmer collection. I decided to pick up one for you. That's a schnepchen. Nearly 50% off. Been in, been enjoying the shows when I can catch them. Cheers, Kevin Wellborn. Kevin, chef's kiss, man. This was a box set. I love these movies, especially Billion Dollar Brain. Um, it's great to have this. And, I mean, look at that badass. Look at that badass. I love what Imprint does with these. They have these cool, the way it's die cut and it comes out. Probably a booklet in here. This is awesome. So thank you for this. When when imprint sells out, they sell out. So hey, I have stuff to show today too. There you go. I, I want to. <coughs> these all came from viewers. I want to thank you for that. Um, if you want to send me stuff, contact me and I'll give you a direct. I mean, I'm not soliciting for you guys to send me shit, but who doesn't love getting shit in the mail? I, I know I do, and I also don't like when I don't get shit in the mail, like my my Severn stuff, my stuff from Zavi. I got plenty of stuff coming for next week, but. Thank you very, very much for that, um, which is great. And to follow up on the heels of that, Paul Sugar Sex Magic, is that Paul from Long Beach, says, an original print has been found in Central Europe. It was mistitled as To Live and Die in Zarbrücken. Apparently, apparently, Luxembourg and Eastern France are Wang Chung tonight. They are. That must be it. God damn it. As you say, damn it. So anyway, let's go back. Back to you. <coughs> Where are okay. we at? <coughs> Sorry. Where we at? A little bit left I need from, more the, beer. From, from the live chat. We have uh, Ben Stapleton. Hell yeah, Crawl is awesome. I showed the 4K last week. The Digi, digi pack. Roberto Suarez. Swag. Fun fact. Swag is an Acronym for stuff we all get. <laughs> and the Alex Sorber, swag is never bad. Okay. What racing Palpatine? Thor 4 was a running gag that we, the audience, was not 
a part of. Okay. Uh, Equity Group, Let's Get Physical Media is super underrated. I probably hope he talks about our our show. And Rob, you showed the and me too. We both have it. The Army of Darkness steelbook and Star Wars. Uh, and Oglu said, "I loved both endings, which the movie uh, uh, came to." Of course, we had a little bit of talk about some cake stuff last week, and South London reseller said, "Nah, tea, coffee, cakes, biscuits is family friendly." Okay, Bill Barclay, what if people don't like coffee? Can it be tea and scones movie? Uh, it can be tea. Just a just a hot beverage is okay. If it's, if your coffee is not your cake, okay, then tea is fine. And Altmetall said Black Forest cherry cake rules. That is probably his favorite. And it was nice to see there was some nice left out loud moments considering the pussy cake stuff. And then Cold came in with some. Hot takes. I really liked E.T. back in the day, but today I just find the movie boring. It's still good, but just boring, like Goonies. Okay. Goonies and then sucks. E.T. Another... <laughs> e. is a masterpiece. <laughs> and then another take from him. I like crane removal as long as they don't go too far with it. Just slight DNR. Okay. Uh, Rob Coates, 62, do you ever find yourself not liking movies when you get older that you did when you were younger? I bought Return of the Living Dead on 4K and didn't like it as much as I used to. Rob Coates, this is a just normal thing with the times that when you are younger, you love stuff. And then when you get older, you watch the movie from a nostalgia point and think, well, this is actually not <laughs> a good movie, but Perhaps the nostalgia will still come through. Well, I, you Rob, know, your it, take? it's funny. I, I I feel that way about a lot of like I've talked about this before, but I feel like exploitation and horror films I have to have in my collection, like classics, like Return of the Living Dead. Mostly because I always thought that I would have you know kids of my own or something and and indoctrinate them. But I think with especially we buy a lot of exploitation titles. And that was kind of like punk rock was when I was younger. You know, I liked har harder core stuff and, and only because I guess it's that youth rebellion. But what I've discovered is like the movies that I watch more often than not, you know, I'll return to something like I'll watch The English Patient. I'll, I love like Goodfellas or Casino. I love um, Almost Famous, uh, Amadeus, all the classic films because they have – more to offer and when i was a kid you know return of the living dead was a lot of fun because it was a riff on yep. the zombie genre and it was it was zombies and punk rock you know and linnea quigley and all that and when you watch it now it's like well it's cool but there are not a, i think great storytelling is full of basic human truths and a lot of horror films that's why i can go back and watch the exorcist and rosemary's baby and never get tired of them but some of the genre horror titles like I remember watching Night of the Comet, which I bought when Shout Factory put it out. I liked Night of the Comet, but watching it now, it it doesn't it doesn't have a lot to offer beyond what it is. And um um but it's true. I mean, I do think that your tastes change and things things are yep. different. Um but that doesn't I mean it's it's interesting to have them from a I guess archaeological standpoint, you know, or sociological standpoint, you can look at that stuff and 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 the way that the the zombie genre has evolved. I mean, now there's so yeah. many zombie movies, but you forget that it goes back, you know, zombie movies go back decades and decades, and how like The Walking Dead and and all the spinoffs became really really important. But to me, you know, I go back and watch Dawn of the Dead. It's still better than anything The Walking Dead ever did, even though The Walking Dead's done some great stuff. By the way, I just opened this Harry Palmer box. So uh, it's got that top that you slide off like the Warriors did. Ooh, look at that. All the nice. discs in there with those thicker Euro discs. Very excited Michael to have Kane this. Michael Caine is headless. <laughs> Michael Caine is headless. But uh, thank you very much for this, Kevin. Very nice. Awesome. <clears throat> so I'm always going from, from the aspect of, since I have uh, friends that are much younger than myself, would I show them 
still the movie, you know? Like mm. the thing, John Carpenter is always, I can show that movie. Yeah. Anyone considering age. But stuff like you said, Return of the Living Dead, I have a, a, a nice smile on my face when I watch it, but would I show them Return of the Living Dead now? Probably not, I would say. Well, I have to say the most fun I ever had, um, 10 years ago, I was visiting my friend Sina Woodruff, who lives in Denmark. And I was there, and she had at the time her daughter, Sophie, who was 13 years old. We had a, f a film festival over a couple of days where we, we rented 10 horror films. And I picked 10 horror films through the ages to show a 13-year-old girl. The first one I showed her was Carrie. <laughs> and which she really liked because even though the clothes were dated, the story yeah, about yeah. what was kind of universal. And then there were other things like we, we saw Nightmare on Elm Street. And it was interesting because back then I felt, wow, this movie seems really dated. Like way more dated than Carrie felt because Carrie was more grounded and Nightmare on Elm Street was very, it, it just, she liked it. She liked the Lost Boys a lot more because of hot dudes. But it was very interesting showing, and that's why I guess I'm kind of addicted to watching um, reaction videos to movies on YouTube just to okay. see, especially like I always joke, I mean, it's kind of joking. I love watching teenage girls react to The Exorcist, not because I have a thing for teenage girls, but because that film, when you have that scene, especially that the scene with the crucifix, they're so freaked out by it. Like Because there's nothing, nowadays, even the most transgressive stuff isn't as transgressive as that. And it's interesting to see people react to those things. Because nowadays, and then I, I, I love watching anyone of any shape, size, color, and creed react to movies that were considered classics in the day and how things have changed. Because what's really interesting is you, I know the reaction videos, but you watch what people respond to. And a lot of people get, I, I hate it when people get tripped up by fashion. Like when they talk about, oh, look at those clothes. I mean, in my mind, even when I was a kid, I understood that people didn't wear the same clothes 40 years ago as they wore today. So when I watched a movie, I would not allow fashion to, I wouldn't bump on fashion. I'm like, well, that's just what they wore back yep. then. But a lot of people today don't do that. They they make fun of things. And what's really interesting is now there's an attitude of, well, if this movie is such a classic, just show me what you've got. As, yep. as if the view, like to me, I always looked at classic films as being outside myself. And you need to rise up to the movie. You can't expect, and, and the, everybody now kind of expects the movie to come to them. You know, you have to go to Muhammad. You, the Muhammad doesn't come to you. And so, you you know, the, the old saying. And, and it bothers me that nowadays that people, because it's our entire civilization, people are at the center of their own existence. So it's like, well, well, this movie isn't a classic unless I say it is. And I'm like, look, man, history already called it a classic. Whether you agree or disagree is not, it's immaterial. It is a classic because history has said so. You might not like it, but anyway. Wow. Where are we at? Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> I know still, you're like still, going, what are you still, saying? Still, I don't know. Still at the live chat. And we, we already talked a little bit about it. Uh, Tom from Midnight's Edge was in the live chat and he said, Barbarian is getting a release according to the director. I don't know about... Uh, see how they run, which is what's uh, the other title. Changes uh, uh, chances are Disney Plus movies won't hit disc at all, if not years after the fact. Okay. And like I said, Tom said, yeah, they haven't fixed it yet. As far as I know, there isn't an alternate like a, a two point one surround considering Escape from LA. But the foreign release is fine, and I checked it, and Tom was right. The foreign release is. Fine. Is the foreign release a 5.1 mix? Yeah, the DDS, DDS Master Auto. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And um, he says, Tom said, we have something coming soon in collaboration with a well known German boutique company. Just can say it. Let's keep an, an eye out for that. And Paul in Long Beach said, if you like a perfect ideal, what a 5.1 or both should sound like play playing. Pink Floyd's A Delicate Sound of Thunder and Balance Accordingly. Okay. Yep. We always have a theme, considering multi-region 
players and the bug is it aren't pcs players region free bill as far as i remember you can switch the code but only five times and then it's locked something like like that i remember but i have, have no idea considering pc pc uh, uh players uh daniel uh, stands them if you buy a german player the regions will change depending not that i know of daniel that would be a new thing to me Okay, this was the two notes from Studio Canal considering uh, raw deal. Altmetall, a new Silent Hill with the original team will come. Christoph Gans will direct. This is a really um, a nice information I, for me because Silent Hill is one of the, for me, one of the top video game. I uh, totally agree. The first Silent Hill movie is great. I really like it. And Christoph yeah. Gans is coming back. Yeah, that's very could exciting. Be, could be, could be. Could be nice. Could be nice. By the way, there's a lot Podrace. of talk. There's a lot of talk in the chat right now about yeah. um, the Superman films in 4K. Okay. Remember this? Yeah, the Phantom Zone stuff. Yeah. Uh, exactly. That's all. But that's all I'm be, saying. They could be. They could be out of the Phantom Zone. Right? That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm no. saying. Can't say, but that's all I'm that's saying. <laughs> Pod racing, Palpatine, free enterprise in 4K, please. It's always nice. That's my goal for you, 2023. The 2023 will be the 25th anniversary of free enterprise premiering at the Sigis Film Festival. And um, if I get my druthers, I, I, I'm going to tell you all this right on right now. Here, I, I'm going to recruit you guys. <clears throat> Obviously, it's expensive. If I can convince our executive producer who owns the movie, I'm going to. It's it's going to cost me about probably about one hundred and seventy five thousand dollars. That's expensive to put the movie to because about you do a transfer it's between eighty and hundred grand just to transfer the film. I have to transfer some extra movies and all the work or extra extra negative, then all the work I would have to do and then I'd have to do a new sound mix and everything. I might even rescore the film. Because I there's there's library music in there that I didn't know at the time that our composer slipped in, but um, you'd have the original versions of it. It'd be a big set. But I would ask you this, you know, if if we I get this, um, uh, if I get it, if I get, I'm going to crowdfund the disc the same way that like Severin would, and and the price point would be high, probably thirty nine ninety five, uh, and it'd probably be a three disc set. And I would I would need that pre order money to finish the disc, so I'm just telling you now, um, if I get the rights, if I can get our executive producer to let me do it, I would pre order because I have a potential streamer streamer that will buy it, but even the cost that they would pay would not it would not cover the 175 grand I would need to do everything I need to do, so. I would to defray the costs. I would do pre-orders, and you know, at at thirty nine ninety five, you get extra stuff that other people wouldn't get. But if I had like you know thirty nine four, call it forty bucks, you know, you have five thousand people, which they wouldn't because there's not five thousand people. But let's call it two thousand. If I could get two thousand people to give me forty dollars, you know, that would be that would be pretty good. Um, it wouldn't be nearly enough, but it would defray the costs. So, anyway. But you won't uh, change the aspect ratio. You tried it, but you will, won't. <clears> I probably, ratio. I probably would. What What I really want to do is create the definitive version of Free Enterprise. It was shot at sixty by nine, one eight five. I would probably, I if you look on on the Post Geek Singularity, if you look on the YouTube page, you can see examples. I put examples up of the film in two three five. And I actually, I, I re-edited all those scenes. Just little subtle re-edits. I'd re-edit the whole movie. It'd be a whole different film. I'd have better special effects done. It would just be a more refined movie. Because I don't, I'm not precious. I'm not going to ruin it. You know, you wouldn't know about most of the, the things. There are two sequences. One sequence I never edited that I'd love to see if I could work into the film. It's a phone conversation between Rob and Claire that I think would go do well. But, um... You know, it just, I would love to get the, def because the movie is essentially out of print. It only exists in standard definition. And it, 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 it's gone. I mean, it's, it's been out of print on disc. So to put it out, I mean, I think it would work. And there's a lot of jokes I'd get canceled for. 
And that alone, <laughs> that alone, may, uh, there's a Mia Farrow joke in there that that alone, uh, I want to get out into the world so people can be like, Rob Burnett should get canceled. Yeah, come at me, bro. Change my mind. Um, but, um, you know, that's what I want to do. I would hope that we could show this new version of the film at Sigis next year. That would be my goal. And I have a year to get it done. So. And how will my copy be signed, Rob? Don't forget it. Yes. No, you'll you'll even be I'll even include you in the new special features. I'm going to interview <laughs> you. I'm going to come to Saarbrücken Deutschland cuz it's yeah. about time. I mean, I need dude, I could come to your you got to take a week off from work whenever you get your next vacation and we'll take a road trip in your fixed car. We'll go to France. We'll just go buy shit. We'll go to I want to go to Berlin to that techno record store and buy some vinyl. Mm -hmm. We've got to go to a great German sex club. <laughs> That'd be great. Don't, we don't have to do that. But we got to go to France, you know. Don't forget, Rob, to sign my free enterprise copy. Fuck off, you douchey douche. You douchey douche. You know? You're going to like the new version better. Okay. <laughs> Considering I showed Le Pac de Loup uh, yes. uh, uh, last Gans. week. And, exactly. And August <coughs> Rogan said, or you can learn French because... There was there will be no there was no English subtitles for the title. South London reseller is there a French resistance at Deeds work? I don't know. I will see tomorrow if there is a French resistance brewing at my firm. And considering I shipped the Lost Boys to our friend Lee Justin Toner, still waiting on my copy on African Kung Fu Nazis. Justin, I still have it right over here. Justin, this is out of my hands, okay? <laughs> and considering there was some stuff with the with the with the competition that we got last week, who was first putting in the the, the wording, the live chat was a little bit mixed up. And Colt, you were when I checked, you were second. When I did go through the live chat again, you were first. But since I'm a stickler for rules, you didn't had the wrong the wrong order considering the, the, the answer the, to answer the questions <laughs> so you went go i want to know what love is luke graham foreigner but dangerous lee had, had the right right order luke graham foreigner i want to know what love is and victor fontaine to the competition said i actually have all the foreigner cities didn't know what was their most famous song uh, had all their lps before that well victor that is a shame and this is on you Hello. Uh, and this is was the live chat room. This was the live chat from last week. So I still have stuff to show, Rob. Or should we go to the some super chats? Uh, I don't know if we have. Uh, we I've got, I have a few. This is this is interesting. Um, okay. So <laughs> Hitchhiker Forty Two says I have over fifty four K discs, but no four K TV. Highlander is out in the UK tomorrow. Yeah, um, exactly. that is true, and I've got multiple copies coming. I now have to don't upgrade. Forget, don't forget the video with with, with the bad Canadian kid, Rob. Well, shh, don't yeah, don't shh, don't tell him. One of those is for he, him. He's don't gonna, watch this show, Rob. He doesn't watch Blurry. the show. He doesn't watch my channel. Um, I have to upgrade possibly the LG C two fifty five or sixty five OLED. Any thoughts? Uh, yeah, I've got thoughts. Uh, OLED makes. I mean, LG makes the OLED screens. And I did get, I got a Schnepchen on um, the C2, I think it's a C2, I think it is, uh, the 65 inch, it'll change your life. 4K will change your life. Uh, and all I can say is I, pro I probably have 500, 500, 600 4K discs and um, it, your, your, all, your entire collection is new again. What is old is new again. And um I mean, there, there are 4K discs that I forgot I bought, like the final countdown that Blue Underground put out. 1980, that fucking disc looks great. And they're dead and buried disc. Uh, it's amazing. So it's great. Get that. Get the 65-inch OLED Hitchhiker 42. All And all I can say is the first disc that you put on, make it something like, I've heard that Top Gun Maverick is the demo disc to end all demo okay. discs, which comes out Tuesday. Next week. But Dune... Dune is the it is unbelievable. I put on Dune, and Elizabeth had never seen a 4K image. And I, when I put it in the media room, I'm like, "Hey, baby, check this out." And uh, 
she couldn't she was blown away i mean you could see she was like what because it's funny because we'd seen 4k but i mean i had this 4k tv it was going to be here in the rob observatory i just hadn't it was there and i i was going to mount it on the wall there but i figured you know what it's since zoe moved out and we had this movie room elizabeth and i were elizabeth and i were talking because her mom and uh, dad come over and stuff and we're like why don't we have we'll make a dedicated movie room i painted it i put pictures up on the wall and stuff and now we have a dedicated movie room with 4K and Dolby 7.1 Atmos surround, which I can always add more speakers to, which is great. Because <laughs> um, it'll be 11.1 soon with dual dual subs. Um, but that's a little... I mean, in that room, it's such overkill. But that's what we love. But um, that OLED set, it's amazing. Amazing. And uh, just take the time to... I will say this, what's really interesting is, you know, they had filmmaker mode. You can't delve too deep. I was really kind of disappointed right. in the controls to set the TV. They do have the filmmaker mode, which is great. And then they have filmmaker home and filmmaker cinema. Filmmaker home bolsters the, the brightness levels more. Um, and, you know, I, I spent a long time calibrating the set. for, And when I got the right set for the input for the, the discs, which is, by the way, different than streaming. Um, it was so great to start streaming TV shows like House of the Dragon in Dolby Vision. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, in the room, the room's pretty small. <laughs> this sound, it's the most <laughs> overpowered. It is so overpowered. The sound system is so overpowering in there. But, you know, why not add a dual sub? And- That's not the wrong way way to go. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, why not add a bunch more? The, the, here's the thing, though. The sound, your sound field, if you have too many speakers in the room and it's too overpowered, it turns to mush. You know, what you want is, like, I have a, it's a 14-inch sub. It's pretty fucking big. And if I put dual subs in there, I'm worried. Like, I don't I don't think in that room it yeah. would necessarily, if I had a much bigger room, no doubt, I would ha- probably have four subs. But in this room... Uh, totally it's, fine it, with, with the one. Yeah, and it, I, it, it's not a big enough room to even put. Like, I l- would love to have rear. I'd like to have side surrounds and rear surrounds, stereo surrounds. But I don't have enough room to to delineate, so I've got rear surrounds, which is fine. But I'd really like to have side surrounds. But unfortunately, it gets. I I tested it. It's a little mushy. And what you want when you have yeah. good sound is you want to be able to hear it. You want it to sound crisp. Thank so. You. Thank you. Anyway, where are we? What am I saying? Are we, are we caught up with, with the Super Chats? Yeah, yeah, we're caught up with Super Chats. Okay. And oh, wait, hang on. Hold on. Okay. Hold, please. No, we're not. Uh, we're not. Ron okay. C. sends in a $20 Super Chat. Thank you, Ron. Ron. Ron C. says, hello, Robin Dietz. I, oh, I would like a 4K of 1960s Village of the Damned. It's not a scary film. It is a creepy film, though. It's a mutant film. But no one knew that during that time. Possible, Rob? You know what? Uh, again, Village of the Damned, you know, crazy, crazy kids. Obviously, John Carpenter remade it with Christopher Reeve in the 90s. I love the original Village of the Damned. It's black and white. Um, I love black and white 4K. Now, I don't know, like, Warner Archive, maybe, but they haven't they haven't gone into 4K yet. But I could see somebody doing that. I would love to. I love that movie. Um you know, is, it, that, is, it the Warner, is it the Warner movie, Rob? I don't know. I don't know. That's a good question. I, I do not know. Okay. But I'll tell you, I certainly would love to get that. And, you know, there's a lot of, like, the Quatermass movies, Quatermass, um, Quatermass 2. I'd love to get those in 4K. But who's going to spend, again, the money? It's, it's yeah. really expensive because you have to go back to the negative. You have to clean the negative. It's labor intensive. You have to put it up on the proper equipment and you have to scan it and then to do it right if there's any negative damage you have to go clean it up digitally it's very labor intensive and people don't understand that that's why not everything is in 4k yeah so but i think that means we are now uh caught up hang on let me make sure yeah i think we're caught up because Uh, i have two 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 discs left to show and and by god you should show them uh hang on let me see um Ooh. yep where paul wang chung tonight we're t- we are yeah. caught up yes sir we are okay. caught up sir 
to phase out. One of our favorite companies, so at least mine, is of course Vinegar Syndrome. Mm. And I've got the 4K of the Texas Sh so Oh. Massacre. Uh, oh, wait, hang Let me go full frame on that, buddy. Look, okay, you know what? I don't know why I ever doubt. Like, I didn't buy Amity, the Amityville Horror. Yeah. Because I just don't dig that movie. But I like Texas Chainsaw 2. I didn't know. I'm like, should I? They do such a... Vinegar Syndrome is is singular in there. There's the Breakfast yeah. Club poster, exactly. of course, the famous Breakfast Club poster. Is that a steel book? Uh, no, Rob. It's just a standard MRA. Was with three with three discs, considering. Wow. You know what? I got to jump on that. I don't want it to sell out. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Vinegar Syndrome, and I, I totally love their their packaging. The hardcover of of the outer shell is always. Always great, great stuff, and they always come come through through customs without any any hickory. So text chains of massacre too. Oh, they package that stuff so well. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah. you know, I gotta say, oh, it's, uh, I don't, I don't know. Uh, they they ship with with FedEx, and somehow there is no uh, custom custom hold up with, they, with they, vinegar syndrome. So that's that's great. Great vinegar great syndrome stuff. is it's funny because they don't have a lot of mainstream titles. I mean I think they're like no. Texas Chainsaw Two <laughs> like that's mainstream. But <laughs> Texas Chainsaw Two, things like Amityville Horror, they did their beautiful Beastmaster set. Um yeah. and of course I will forever love they them have, for they have their specific really a specific niche rope. Yes. Know? But they also have like porn which is yeah, good. Yeah. They're, they're 70s, as I like to call it, my favorite bush porn of the 70s. I had to get their taboo box set, but they released Voyage of the fucking Rock Aliens, which I showed. And God bless them, the two movies, Liquid Sky. If no other reason, when when the world is ending and the four horsemen of the apocalypse are spreading pestilence <laughs> or whatever, I'll be out there going, hey, don't forget, Vinegar Syndrome put Body Melt and Liquid Sky out on disc. Thank you. Now I'll, you know, my body will wither away, and I'll be going. <laughs> but vinegar syndrome—they're fantastic. <laughs> um, <laughs> as I die, take me away, <laughs> Calgon. Take me to the next life. But somebody should pick up my vinegar syndrome discs because they're worth it. <laughs> exactly, Rob. And the next one I already showed, and this is probably the reason why why Rob brought me on the show. Because you know he knew this guy is nuts. <laughs> I already showed writing wrongs, which came in this nice box set from. Is that Vinegar also Syndrome. Vinegar Syndrome? Yeah, exactly, Rob. And but since I love the movie, Rob, I got the UK one from '88 Films too. And this looks like this one. Wow. So totally different cover. Now and now, what you can't just say the title without explaining. Come on, Dietz. This is like a Dieter Bastian orgasm. Who's in this movie? Uh, Cynthia Rondrick, Ross Rock, of course, and Ewan Pugh. And it's a hard action thriller. And the great thing about the UK releases, Rob, I told you back in the day when I first showed The Vinegar Syndrome, the movie has different endings. You had a first test screening where both heroes die. Of course, the audience were not so thrilled with that. Then they changed the ending, you know, where both lives. So you have different endings. And the great thing about the UK set drop is there is a second disc where you can watch with a random random, uh, 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 randomizer where you don't know what ending you will be getting. <laughs> and, since you have, and since you have the endings, both are dying, both are living, they did two separate endings where one is dying and the other one lives. So you have four different endings wow. for, for the for, for the movie. So you can choose just a randomizer where you don't know what you will be getting for an ending, or you can pick the ending which you, you are in the mood for. But I haven't delved into the set itself, but I loved the cover, the cover artwork already. So writing wrongs or above the law is the the, uh, and not the, the Steven Seagal back, above the law. Back, yeah, back in the day, this is probably yes, they create artwork for it. This was probably one of the more 
Asian release covers. And it's really great because the title was uh, it did get a release in Hong Kong, but this uh, disc is out of print for the for the longest time. And one of our viewers wrote, they took me up with the title before these releases were uh, uh, getting getting out. Of course, we have a booklet for the movie. Yeah, man. Come on, check that so, shit out. And Look at that. Then, okay, this is just a, wait, the card that was around the package. And then we have here the package with the two discs. Of course, we have the reversible cover artwork that you could that you could use. And here some lobby cards in the form more of postcards for it. So I probably wouldn't have gotten the set since I already own the vinegar syndrome, but considering the idea to put out a version where you can have the movie with a randomizer. Dude, just that's dope. That's like know. that's the, that's like clue. It's got four endings. It's like clue. Yeah. Exactly. Where you don't know what ending you will be getting, or you can choose what ending you are <sighs> in the mood for, which is a great idea. And I don't know, considering the bonus materials, if they are identical to the vinegar syndrome release or if there is something else and new on this. I haven't dived into the set uh, uh intensely what is other than than the super duper cut uh else is other than the vinegar syndrome so from the uk from adl films writing wrongs so this was my stuff from this week Rob. a fine haul it is now now i haven't got this yet but yeah. i do want again my friend clark von trotha uh, brought my attention to this set and um, I really, I, I, I feel the need, not just the need for speed, but I feel the need to show people uh, this. Yeah. Because again, when people are putting this shit out, I really, I really want to be supportive of it. So the, um, uh, where I've, I've got to find it here. I'm, I'm looking in my Amazon packaging. Okay. This, I gotta, I gotta get this and uh, I, I gotta, I gotta I gotta tout this um because it, it sounds amazing. This the set sounds amazing. I know nothing about it and nor do I know these movies. Okay. But um I do I wanna show it to you. I wanna show this disc to you. And you know, only because look, it's this comes out from Severin. And I feel like this I mean, Dietz, you and I are looking we're we're constantly looking at what comes out um you know what comes out in what what people are releasing. I mean, we're constantly doing that, and this totally I was off my radar. I I did not know that this disc was even coming out, nor had I even heard of it, which is amazing. So here it is. This comes from Severn. It's a box set, The House of Psychotic Women, rarities collection now first of all i mean that's that's my entire dating life no i'm just kidding i've always dated beautiful women and, and nice women and they were not psychotic but this box set has two ratings it's a five disc collector's edition there's an elizabeth taylor movie obviously she's on the cover and um i want to read this um <laughs> this because this is the best in 2012 kir la janice published House of Psychotic Women, billed as a, quote, autobiographical topography of female neuroses in horror and exploitation films. It soon became one of the most vital, by Tim Lucas, video watchdog, and astonishing, by Daily Grindhouse, genre tomes of all time. To mark the book's 10th anniversary, award-winning writer, programmer, filmmaker, Janice, I think I'm getting it right, now presents four of the strongest and strangest explorations of on-screen delirium and hysteria, all on U.S. Blu-ray for the first time. Elizabeth Taylor stars in 1974's Identikit as a woman who travels to Rome to find the most dangerous liaison. In the surreal 1986 
Polish horror comedy, I Like Bats. A vampire discovers that love may be the cruelest curse of all. Florinda Bolkin stars in the startling 1975 amnesiac Jallo Footprints from the director of The Fifth Chord and British screenwriter and radical theater icon Jane Arden directs 1972's harrowing The Other Side of the Underneath. So there you go. It is a box set of The House of Psychotic Women. It is. It came out this week. I'm getting mine again tomorrow. Um, come on. Who doesn't want that in their collection? I mean, <laughs> that alone. Uh, I don't know if it comes with a copy of the book, but I got to get that book. Mm-hmm. Maybe it is. Maybe the book is in the box set. I'm not quite clear on that. Um, but that is definitely something. <clears throat> um, I, I, maybe it doesn't come with the book. It just comes with yeah. the movies. But, um, hey, that box set from Severin, you guys go. And who doesn't want a box set called The House of Psychotic Women? I live in one. <laughs> nice. Um, uh, so just to show the two sets again, the nice, the nice thing about it, they are actually pretty similar considering the height. So you could put them together. So if you have a region free player, I would actually recommend the UK one. But if you don't, the vinegar syndrome is fine too. Considering I like I like mostly the the sad ending, you know, post dying. <laughs> Whatever that that tells about me, I don't know. Okay. We have news. We have news, Deets. We have news. I mean okay. another two and a half hour show, which is fine. Yeah. Uh news. So the first thing is our friends at Kino Lorber. Kino Lorber mm-hmm. announcing another our another, new best friends. <laughs> our new best friends, another classic release on 4K. Charles motherfucking Bronson in Death Wish. Look at that. Multiple covers. Death Wish in 4K. Vigilante city style. Judge, jury, and executioner. You go, Kino. They're putting it out in 4K. How could you not want this? I mean, I want it. It's fantastic. Also coming out, not from Kino, from our friends at Studio Canal, dipping into the past. They're putting out Orson Welles, the 60th anniversary restoration of the 4K of The Trial, starring Anthony Perkins, directed by Orson Welles, based on the novel by Franz Kafka. And we're living in the most Kafka-esque reality now ever, so we all need to get this. Uh, Orson Welles directing The Trial, starring Anthony Perkins. Who doesn't want it? Everyone's saying, I don't, but you should, because it's great. And uh, it's coming out in 4K from Studio Canal. Yay, Studio Canal. Um, This is the first of the December releases from Warner Archive, Night of the Iguana, uh, a great film. Look at that cast. Richard Burton, Ava Gardner, Deborah Kerr, and Sue Lyon, Lolita herself. Uh, This is a great movie based on a Tennessee Williams play. If you've never seen it, you should. It's one of two releases from Warner Archive in December. You go, George Feltenstein. Look at that cover. I mean, my God, do they know. They know. We want to see artwork. And then not to be outdone, speaking of covers... Attack of the 50-Foot Woman. I've been waiting for to see this. All You know where you want to climb up right there. I can see. Um, uh, the Attack of the 50-Foot Woman. My God. Uh, I'm sure it's an, a stunning transfer. Um, a great, a, a great, a great title from the 50s. And uh, who doesn't want that? Awesome that they're putting that out. Now, our friends in the UK at Indicator are putting out John Huston's Freud. Now, to be honest, I've never seen this movie. I've always wanted to see this movie. But the music score, a lot of the score from this movie, I believe, was repurposed for Alien. The Jerry Goldsmith score. They used some of it uh, for Alien. I think it's this movie. I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, you tell me. Uh, But Indicator's putting this out. I've never seen it. Want to see it. Uh, Can't wait. Indicator, they always do a fantastic job with their transfers. They're, They're an amazing group of people. Um, over there at Indicator. Always buy what they put out because it's always great. Groundhog Day coming out in 4K. The great Groundhog Day. I mean, they try and cancel Bill Murray. He's in Quantum Mania, and they're putting out Groundhog Day. Um, so there you go. That's coming out in 4K. Who doesn't love Groundhog Day? Um, you know, 
Arrow. Arrow putting out the Dunwich Horror. You know? The Dunwich Horror, great movie. Another great movie. Arrow's putting out. Just buy everything that Arrow puts out. Why not? They're also putting out this. I've never seen the Lucas Moodison collection, but he made a movie called Fucking Them All. And it's in this set. And Lila Forever I've actually seen. So Lucas Moodison's collection. This is coming out from Arrow along with the Dunwich Horror. It's on Arrow. So, you know, you should get it. And look at this. I mean, I don't know if it's everybody's um, cup of tea. But, uh, hey, you got it. The Lucas Moodison collection looked interesting. But this is just Blu-ray. Let's get back to 4K. You know you want this. Dr. Caligari, Better Living Through Chemistry. This is coming out from Mondo Macabre. Or Macabro. The fact that a company like Mondo is putting out 4Ks now, I don't particularly... I've seen this movie. It's not the greatest, but the fact that they're putting it out in 4K, I'd love to see more Mondo films in 4K. So, heck, why not support their efforts? I think that that's, that's a worthy cause. Why not? And then, of course, uh, we've got also announced uh, Patrick Reed Johnson, the writer of... Dragonheart, right? Uh, 52577, a movie of his own life when he was a kid when Star Wars came out as a young, budding filmmaker. Um, he's been trying to get this movie done for like 10,000 years. And the fact that it's coming out, I'm going to buy this anyway on Blu ray. I've not seen it yet. I've seen some of it, and uh, it's wonderful. So buy that. It's coming out on Blu ray. Well, it was, it, it is. It is new because it hadn't really come out. He hadn't well, is it a, a New York Ninja type of situation? No, it's not quite like that, but it's <laughs> sort of like that. And you know what? Patrick Reed Johnson, I don't know if you watch this show. We've been Facebook friends for a long time. I admire the fact that you got this out. you got to come on the show. When the disc comes out, we want to promote this movie for you. Tell us what, you know, did you have to, what did you do to get, did you, did you have to sacrifice virgins to get this movie out? What did you do to do it? Uh, more power to you, sir. I want to give you all the support in the world. So come on and talk about the film, which would be great. Uh, inevitably, Dietz, House of the Dragon, uh, 4K coming out. If you, you know, here's the thing. I mean, I, I feel like with, along with uh, uh, Better Call Saul, I feel like I have to wait to get the entire series when it comes out, but maybe I can't wait that because they'll do some great box set uh, for House of the Dragon. But yeah, yeah, because these are expensive. This is expensive shit, yeah. House of the Dragon. Yeah. So. Yeah. Now that House of the Dragon is over, there's no House of the Dragon tonight. Yeah. So I got to ask you, how did you feel about the series? I loved it. Really, really strong comeback after the uh, season, season eight, eight of the, which uh, where a lot of people soured on, you know, but they did make a strong comeback. And uh, I don't know, but the showrunners are completely different as far as I know. So let's see. How uh, if they can keep keep it up? But there were, was really a strong start, and considering there were time jumps, which uh, actually could be jarring, but they managed that uh, pretty well. Mm -hmm. I would say. I thought so too. I thought it was really good. Yeah, and, and then of course I will will get get them on on this group. Oh yeah, and just in time for Halloween, Deets. It's been yeah. rumored. I've been told. You know, okay. now it's it's confirmed. Next year is the 100th anniversary of Warner Brothers. I believe it's it's either next year or the year after. It's the 100th anniversary of Disney as well. So they're planning a lot of catalog releases. Um, hello. Please put out the right stuff in 4K. Hello. Grail Disc. Come on, George. I know you're working for Warner Archives, but you tell those motherfuckers over there at Warner Brothers. Uh, if I have to call David Zaslav, as a matter of fact, why don't I? <laughs> I just call up David Zaslav and be like, bruh, there's no reason why you can't. I know the Warner Brothers switchboard. I'll just have him send me to David Zaslav's office and talk to his assistant, and I'll make make up some shit. I used to work at Warner Brothers. I know how to get past assistants, and that I'll leave that message, and I'll pretend <laughs> like uh, that I was supposed to call him. So I will, David. When you hear from me, when when uh, just tell him RMB called. When you see that message, and he'll be like, who the fuck is RMB? Me. You should know me, so David. The one who wants you, the right stuff. Yeah, and and uh, you know what? I, it's just going to be. You know what I'll say? I'll say, yeah, I'm calling from, um, I'm calling from Warner Home Entertainment. 
for for uh, for Michael Crawford. I'm calling from <laughs> Michael Crawford's office. He's still there, and I'm going to say um, we actually need your approval for two movies because you know what. No one thinks to do this. I should fucking totally do this. I, I'm going to call David Zaslav's office. I will say that I'm calling from Michael Crawford's office because he still works for Warner Home Video. And I'm going to say, um, we actually, and this is true, we actually need your approval to continue doing the 4K restoration of Ken Russell's The Devils. Because <laughs> they can't. And then we also need your your personal authorization to approve the uh, 4K restoration and release of the right stuff, both on HBO Max and on 4K disc. I don't know why I don't do that more often. Just call up people. <laughs> I should just call them up and be like, hey, we need the devils. We need Le Warner Legal House to approve it. Because he'll, he won't know what the fuck it is, and he'll, he'll, he'll look at it and go like he's supposed to. What you do, here's how you do it. You pretend that people are supposed to know you, and you have to know how to do industry speak. I'm going to do that. I'm totally going to call up and I'll get Michael Crawford in trouble. <laughs> I'll be like, his assistant will be like, uh, David Zaslav is calling Michael. <laughs> I'm calling from Michael because you call the Warner Brothers switchboard and then they put you through. So no one, it, it. Perhaps Robby would go, actually, that's a good idea. Yes. Yes. <laughs> the way I would present it to him, I'd be like, well, uh, and it'd be great because I'm like, well, you know, as part of the 100th anniversary, we are pre pre prepping many of Warner Brothers' great catalog titles. We're doing Amadeus, which is Best Picture, and we're doing whatever. I can just make up some shit, and it'll sound. But there are two titles that we don't have full authorization on. We need your authorization. Uh, can you please call? <laughs> <laughs> I should totally do that just to see, because I'll never know what's going to happen. It's not like someone's going to call me and go. They can't call me and go, uh, Rob, you can't just call people up. And When I called Dick Cook when he was the head of Disney, when I was doing my Tron documentary, I just fucking called the, the head of Disney Studios. And I said, because he worked at Disney um, during when Tron was released. He worked in publicity. So I called his assistant and I said, listen, I'm calling from Curdy Pellerin. We are, we are the, the DVD team and we do all the special features for Pixar, which is true. All this, And I was directing this documentary on the making of Tron. And I said, Mr. Cook was one of the only people that's currently working at the studio that um, was at the studio when Tron was released 20 years before. And I would love to interview him for uh, the Tron 20th anniversary disc that you we were releasing this year for the 20th anniversary of the film. They got back to me an hour later. Mr. Cook would absolutely like to be interviewed. Could you come to his office on this day? Totally did. And I got fucking <laughs> yelled at. I got yelled at by the people the people at Disney Home Video. They're like, you can't just call up the head of the studio and ask to go interview him. And I was like, why? And they're like, but we ha you, you have to go through us. And I'm like, why? Like you, skip, and you, skip, you skip the line, Rob. <laughs> yeah, and, and I'm, I'm like, why? They would never have called him. And, of course, I go. they were so pissed at me. And I'm like, you guys are just pissed because you didn't make the call. That's doesn't mean hierarchy anything to you, Rob. <laughs> no, and you know what's funny? I would be a lot more. I'd be a lot further along in my career if I did more shit like that. But the problem is, I don't really work at Warner Brothers. I know people that do, and I don't want to get anyone in trouble. Michael Crawford, <laughs> but Michael Crawford, if you get a phone call from Zaslav, Zaslav's office about the right stuff and Ken Russell's The Devils, which I am sure you're not exactly keen to see released, that was because of me. I'll, I take full responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, but that said, it was announced coming out in 4K, both versions, finally, to celebrate next year, 2023, is the 50th anniversary of my favorite horror film of all time, coming out in 4K, The Exorcist. William Peter Blatty's The Exorcist, the extended director's cut, and the original theatrical version... It's coming out. Now, I guess I can say this, um, you know, now that it's it's released, uh, George Feltenstein has said to me that the restoration of the film in 4K, all of that, is incredibly impressive. William Friedkin has been involved. So, hey, Bill, Billy, Hurricane, Billy, uh, now that The Exorcist is done, how about a little something for the effort, a little to live and die in L.A.? Can you approve that? Can you call Kino Lorber, our boys at Kino Lorber? They're sending us your discs. We'll review them. 
please get on to live and die in LA. Approve that master. Let's make it happen. How great would it be if the exorcist and to live and die in LA come out in 4k on the same day? We can just, we can have a national holiday. I'll Jimmy. call, I'll call the new mayor of LA, whoever that's going to be. I'll be like, yo, keys to the city, <laughs> Billy Friedkin, exorcist. Did it. And, did it. Uh, I mean, I should just start doing that. I should just start calling people <laughs> and make YouTube videos of it. Today, I'm calling David Zaslav's office. <laughs> Why not? And see, I'll see. Just I'll have let's, to prove. Let's see just, how far you can. You, yeah, how you good? Can, how good am go. I? How good am I? <laughs> let's see. <laughs> you know, I've seen Star Trek: Picard season three twice. <laughs> Who do I have to call? <laughs> and it ain't Ghostbusters, let me tell you. So, um, so that's those are the discs that I picked to showcase nice. on. Let's look at the sales figures as we do. Uh, the top ten Blu-ray sellers for the week. Top ten Blu-ray. Bullet Train, Thor, Love and Thunder, Batman and Superman, Battle of the Super Sons, the animated film, Jurassic World Dominion, Return of the Living Dead, the new release, Beast, the Idris Elba film, Bodies, 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 you'll like that, The League of Super Pets, Minions, The Rise of Gru, and Elvis, none of those are surprising. Um, then we have the five home media sellers for the week. Now, this is the top five of all physical media that's sold. You can see next to this the percentage of Blu-rays from the market share. So Bullet Train was number one, but 68% of the Bullet Trains that were sold were Blu-ray. So what is that? 32% were not. DVD, whatever. Um, Thor Love and Thunder, uh, or 4K. Thor Love and Thunder, 55% Blu-rays. Um, Hocus Pocus, obviously with Hocus Pocus 2 on Disney+. Plus. Beast, 45% Jurassic World Dominion. And our favorite category, Dietz, a shattering, uh, uh, it's 3D, and there are, uh, where did Aquaman 3D come from? Uh, it joins the ranks. Top Gun 3D is still number one, Wizard of Oz. And if you see the percentage of total unit sales, Top Gun 3D is point, point seven two percent That's like six copies, or seven copies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Wizard of Oz, 0.5%. That's like, what, two copies, maybe? How many copies did they sell? But say, 3D is... It jumped up to the top, maybe. I don't know why. Maybe with... It was. It was. Now we got three there. And finally, the top five. Now, I totally forgot Punisher Warzone came out in 4K. I missed that. Look at that. 99.20 that means that almost all these are the top 4k discs punisher warzone which i don't have return of the living dead et the extraterrestrial harry potter the eight film collection that must have been reduced in price and bullet train so look at that four of those are catalog titles i include carry potter as a catalog title um look at they're selling big time and Look at that. Return of the Living Dead and Punisher Warzone were re-released in 4K. And look at those sales figures. Gotta love that. So there is all the new those are the yeah, there's the news that's fit to print, Dietz. So uh nice. I'm gonna call I'm gonna call David Zaslav's office tomorrow. I think I should totally do that. <laughs> yeah. I should totally do that. And and just pretend like um and I'll you know what? I don't even have to talk to him. All I have to do is tell his assistant that we need approvals. And leave it there and tell him to call back to Michael Crawford's office at Warner Home Video. <laughs> because you, you are onto something here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and, and maybe maybe I'll get the ball rolling. Because you know what? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. The the way to succeed, you know, but in, in real life, you just you have to know how to do it. You have to know how to talk to people and whatever. But you just pretend that it's a thing. Like it's um so you don't go you don't go hee hee hee. You call up and you go, um, Hi, I'm calling from so-and-so's office over at Warner Home Video. Here's our extension. Um, we, obviously, you you know that next year is the 50th uh, anniversary of whatever. It's not, it's the 100th anniversary of the studio. And we have, unfortunately, we've run into legal snags. And we need, actually, the approval of the top brass of the studio in order to move forward on these incredible titles that are going to be on HBO Max. You just make it just a bunch of bullshit. And the, the assistant will be like, uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Won't know exactly what you're saying. So what we need, though, from Mr. Zaslav is approval to start the process, the legal process of, of getting legal approval because we have to have it from house counsel, 
for Ken Russell's The Devils. And then we also just, we don't need House Council approval, but we need uh, the approval to pull the trigger on the 4K restoration of Philip Kaufman's The Right Stuff. And and <laughs> she'll just write that shit down. And then what will happen is Michael Crawford's assistant will get a call and and they'll be like, oh, yes, we'll get right on that. <laughs> <laughs> and then people will try and figure out, well, who made the initial call? The, the, well, it the came boy, from your starting, office. The boy will be rolling. <laughs> yeah, and then people will figure it out. And and, and and maybe, maybe we'll get the right stuff on 4K just because I want it. And that's the way the world should work. <laughs> <laughs> just give, give everyone a call. Well, you know what? You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. Yeah. More often than not. Are we, um, we all caught up uh, with uh, super I think chats? we're all caught up with everything. I think we're caught up with Super Chats. And, I think uh, oh, wait a minute. A super wait chat. a minute. We yeah, do. We do. Uh, we do. We've got more stuff. The, um, the Vixter. The Vixter yeah. 5001 says, I saw all 10 20-minute episodes of The House Dragons Built. That is the new behind-the-scenes series that HBO dropped. I have not seen any of it. Oh, Incredible nice. to see the BTS of House of the Dragon. Odd. They won't be on the DVD and no episode commentaries either. I miss packed extras on discs. Yeah. Look, me too. And I think it, it it's really, they, here's the thing. They don't want us to buy these things anymore. They're on streaming services. They want you to subscribe to HBO Max to watch this content. They, and unfortunately, that's just the world that we live in. Unless you're dealing with a boutique company, that will spend the time, whether it's a second sight, whether it's an 88 films, whether it's one-on-one films, whether it's Vinegar Syndrome, whether it's Criterion, whether it's Kino Lorber, uh, whether it's Blue Underground. I mean, take your pick. Whatever, Severin. Um, I'm, I'm sure I just left somebody out and they're going to be like, well, how come you didn't mention us? Well, I'm sorry. But but unless it's a boutique company, if it's Indicator, you know, if it's, uh, if it's uh, 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 Studio Imprint. Canal, if it's Imprint trying to get everyone in they're the only people that care um hbo they'll give it they'll give you great 4k discs they'll put them out and they'll sell but they're not the big studios are no longer i mean they might if they have a deal with the filmmakers or something but you're not going to see that kind of support they want you to subscribe to their streaming service and that's just the way and, of the uh, world. rob considering house of the dragons that was one aspect that i forgot to mention i totally loved that they Gave the showrunners, you know, so 10 minutes after every episode to explain a little bit yep. what they were thinking about the show, what they uh, uh, were planning. It was a, a nice a nice add-on for, for every episode. Yeah, it was really good, great. And they did that for uh, Game of Thrones as well, but it was really awesome yep. to hear where they were coming from, to clarify things. I yep, love that. Exactly. By the way, Big Raj, Big Raj sends us yep. a thumbs up super sticker. Super stick. Thanks, Big Raj. I appreciate so, that. Um, but so, yeah, Vixter, yeah, it's, it's a real bummer that yeah. that's where we're at okay but hey man you know we're approaching what's with these three hour shows dude not that i don't love I, talking to I you. i have no idea Rob. and since i have early shift i would would appreciate it if we can slowly fade out now let's go let's <laughs> let's uh I, I have nothing more to say okay so from my perspective jede person die du triffst hat eine geschichte zu erzählen die du noch zu hören hast alles was du tun musst ist zuhören every person you meet has a story to tell that you have yet to hear. And all you have to do is listen. And with that, I would say to all of you, have a better day. Keep buying physical media and spin those discs hard and fast. And get into, get into 4K if you haven't. It's worth it. And call, and call Zaslow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm going to call David Zaslow. I need Ken Russell's The Devils, and I need the right stuff in 4K. You know, I can't... Don't send me lists of everything I should... By the way, I think I'm going to do this, and I'm going to film myself and play it next just, week. Just to see, just just to see what what is up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the thing is, the thing is, I've now I've now given it up, so they'll they'll know. Mike okay. Michael Crawford will be like, "What the fuck?" Um, <laughs> but anyway, on that note, okay, note, I would say to all of you, thanks for watching. I want to thank our moderating staff who have been yeah. great. I want to thank Lord Toth. Toth. I want to thank Justin, Justin Toner. I want to thank Tom Jr. Jackson for being a goof person. Thank you so much. I want to thank everybody who generously supports this channel via Super Chats and tips and all that and memberships. We will have a membership call next week. Remember, if you can, if you speak Spanish, uh, Latinx men or Latinx men, however you want to call it, 
They might change the name. I don't know. Uh, started yesterday. Our first, it's 97% Spanish. So in Spanish. So there you go. If you speak Spanish, tell your friends. If you don't, I mean, you can watch it and see if you understand Spanish, which is great. And then, of course, you have Rm's, uh, um, uh, uh show that's on Mondays. It'll be on tomorrow. There might be another Rob Observations today, maybe. I'm not sure yet. And then, oh, Fredo. Hello, Fredo. Valco's uh, has been a member on the channel for four months. Thank you, Fredo, for being a member. Um, yeah, so there you go. Um, that's it. I guess this is the end of episode 80. Dude, 85. Unbelievable. 85 episodes of this show. It only only took us 85 episodes for one company to reach out to you. (laughs) I I know, right? No one said, no one reaches out to us. I mean, we are out there maybe because our our viewership is small, but dedicated. But dedicated, Rob. And uh, right in the sweet spot, all of our, the people that watch the show are buying shit. So, you know. Yeah. And then we got like Twin Flix. I think I get. I think Twin Flix gets free shit already. Totally, totally. They totally because get Rob, because he got two copies of one movie that I'm really looking forward uh, to, and he did send out the second copy to me, but I didn't get it in time. But next week, I hope it will will be there, so I won't give it give it away. Yeah, my Columbia 4K box. Look, I'm getting Annie in 4K. But there you go. So, on my note, have a better day or evening. See you next week.